high pressure scent. God bless you. You're welcome to the fourth month, the month of April. Genesis chapter 1 and speaking from verse 1. The Bible said, and God said, in the beginning, let there be light. This is the beginning of the month of April. I don't know what your expectation from God must have been. But one thing is certain is that there is a beginning to everything. This month's beginning is a beginning for you, a new season. It's a beginning for you, a new open door. It's a beginning for you, a new phase, a new chapter of your life. It's a beginning of your new encounters with God. It's a beginning where all things were passed away and all things are made new. All things are made fresh. All things are made to come alive because the word of the Lord will be breathed upon it. The word of the Lord will hit every aspect of your life and absolutely bring them back to life. I don't know what has been dead in your life. I don't know what has been stagnant. I don't know what has been dormant in your life. There is a beginning and surely this is the beginning of restoration for you. Stay tuned and watch as the word of the Lord comes to us on this platform, Reflector Hub TV, via the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. God bless you so much. Stay tuned and get blessed. We say yes, Lord, yes. Our songs are rising.
Lift your hands to Jesus and bless him tonight. You can change through me, lift through me, bless through me, anoint through me, transform through me. Someone is blessing his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord from everlasting to everlasting you are God we crown you King we acknowledge you as Lord thank you for in Jesus name we pray I'd like you to ask the Lord to give you an encounter tonight. The Bible says the Lord appeared again unto Samuel by his word. I'd like you to pray and cry that this is my Shiloh appear unto me by your word in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Appear again by your word. Appear again by your word. The word that brings me lifting, the word that brings me advancement, the word that will shift me to a new dimension, I receive in the name of Jesus. My heart is open to receive. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. You don't appear before the Lord and go down. When you appear before the Lord is from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we pray that you will speak to our hearts. We have come with our hearts open. We have come determined to learn determined to access higher dimensions of grace and wisdom spirit of the living god move among us and let jesus be glorified in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated it's always a blessing for us to be gathered here again it says i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord and we bless the Lord again for the manifold wonders that he continues to do in our lives and across the nation in Jesus name may I encourage you to remain resolute as far as your spiritual growth is concerned hallelujah the times that we're living in will require high level spiritual illumination if you are to excel and um, it's 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 very very important as for me I've made a commitment under God that Acts chapter 20 and verse 20 will remain a reality in this house in this ministry it says i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house i have kept back nothing provided it makes for your spiritual growth it makes for your transformation it sponsors your encountering the power of god and it can transform you you can be sure that it will not be held back for you, from you hallelujah so tonight please be attentive there are always people who come to church and they allow the devil to cheat them by being distracted in as much as god connects destinies in church the church is not a place for business discussions it's not a place to look around when you are before the lord you must give him your attention hallelujah the bible says the man who was at gate beautiful peter said look on us and he looked at them expecting to receive something hallelujah may the word tonight bless you amen. shout it louder amen. amen 
may the teaching tonight be a ladder that will lift you to realms beyond your imagination he said i went up by revelation it takes revelation to sponsor your advancement and the lord himself is going to do us good tonight in the mighty name of jesus let's start with second timothy chapter 4 second timothy chapter 4 and let's look at verse 7 As I prepared for tonight's teaching, I, I just decided to meditate a bit on this scripture and it struck me so, so much. And I thought to just share my contemplations. Peter is speaking, to, I mean, Paul is speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he said, I have fought a good fight. What is a good fight? A fight that has eternal value. A fight that is pro destiny are we together a fight that has rewards in this life and even in the life to come he said i have fought a good fight then he says i have finished my course and then he says i have kept the faith paul here redefines destiny for us in a very spectacular way number one he teaches us from this statement that life and destiny is a fight and that the earth here is a battleground it's a very powerful information he was teaching his son in the gospel he says i have fought a good fight so there is a dimension to life and destiny that requires warfare there is a dimension to life and destiny that is a fight now, whether you are aware or not, it does not change that reality. Number two, he also teaches us that life is a race. Hallelujah. It's a journey and akin to a race. Some versions will say, I have finished the race. He says, I have finished my course. So he gives us the picture of an athlete or someone on a journey. Are we together? Then he says, I have kept the faith. Number three, he teaches us that life is a gift and life is a treasure that must be guarded and protected. That the possibility of losing your life and your destiny is there. Notice very carefully, please back to KJV, thank you. He says, I have, in fact, leave, leave NIV so that I can use it for the discussion. I have fought a good fight. So life is a battleground life will, re will require a fight and warfare number two he says i have finished the race you have to start to finish and then he says i have kept the faith this is very powerful because you see if you understand the various dimensions that are captured in life you will also know the kinds of preparation you need to make to face those dimensions are we together if you know that life is a fight and is a battleground then you will pay the price to learn the armory of a warrior you will not only learn about it you will pay whatever price it takes to make sure that the armory of a warrior one determined to win imagine with me for instance that someone maybe a military man is mandated to go to Sambisa or one of these hideouts for terrorists and then he goes there with a short nika like he's running and then a short nika a t-shirt a bottle of water in his hands and his sneakers ready to fight the destination is correct but the preparation is wrong because what you are about to face there is not a race the people you meet in a warfare are not your competitors they are enemies in a race you don't have to fight enemies are we together you call a race competition not warfare but you call a battle warfare not competition so knowing the various dimensions i hope god is speaking to someone already knowing the various dimensions that are captured in life and destiny helps you to make sure that as you sojourn 
make sure you have the regalia of an athlete so that if you do find yourself in the field imagine now the flip side of the story imagine that someone gets into an olympic field carrying ak-47 rpg well dressed with the helmet and stands at the line together with the rest as soon as they say on your marks set go he starts shooting around the correct destination but the preparation is wrong then the bible says i have kept the faith this is very powerful that means there is something at the end of your life at the end of your life and destiny there are some things that should still be with you there are some things that can drop on the way childishness youthfulness but there are some things you should protect and never lose if at the end of the race you do not find them you lost your life you don't have to be dead to lose your life to lose your life and to lose the faith means someone would have taken your bishopric you can lose your bishopric you can lose your lampstand your place your relevance your influence very powerful information so he says i have fought the good fight in other words when i began my journey i didn't know what to expect he's mentoring his young son in the gospel he said listen you are a young man and you are going to face life in a dynamic way let me teach you how to prepare for life do not prepare only to run you must prepare to fight and you must prepare to keep and to protect that means your arsenals should carry the armory of a warrior should carry the clothes of an athlete and should carry a treasure chest if you will allow me to use that word because there are some things that need to be guarded and protected now there are people who see life only as a battleground unfortunately when life is presented to them as a race they are busy shooting around and wondering why they are not making progress because that is not the demand for that scenario are we together imagine someone who has a beautiful jewelry gold and all of that he puts it in a treasure chest and keeps it somewhere outside maybe close to the road and says nobody should touch it just leaves it open and goes away he does not know that there are many people who desire that same thing are we together and he leaves it there only to come and find that it's been taken away I had to meditate on this scripture myself and to pray for myself it gave me such a profound revelation life is a battleground but not a battleground alone life is a race but it's not a race alone life is a gift that must be cherished and protected so in my preparing for life and destiny if I find God training me like a warrior, I don't feel I'm losing because there is a place for that training. There is a point where God will suddenly change your training. Listen carefully. And you find out that in a strange way, the training has switched. But you still want the training of a warrior alone. And God says, remove all your warrior garment. Why are you on the shorts of a runner, an athlete? God, I thought I'm going to be fighting all my life. And then there are times you would come for training and the only training you will receive is how to keep things and you'll be wondering god i should be fighting there are many people because you do not know this dynamism you have refused to attend certain classes in the spirit listen carefully and it is about to become catastrophe in your life a mighty warrior is only relevant when he's in the battlefield when a warrior gets to an a, a stadium to run that warrior can be a disaster because the requirement for being a good athlete is speed agility not just the not just being a warrior are we together so this upfront is a message for you respect and discern and believe the various forms of spiritual training that God is subjecting you to are we together there are some of you when you see God training others as athletes you want to leave the battleground and just go and change your regalia and God is saying remain there 
The amount of time it takes to train a military officer is not the same amount of time it takes someone to run. Is that true? There are people without any training, they could run and win. But it's impossible to shoot and shoot excellently without a training. There are people who naturally, they can keep secrets. They can stomach things and keep it there. But there are people who have to be trained. My call for you tonight, listen to me. These three groups of people are scattered within this congregation this night. As you are listening to me, although everybody is listening to the same thing, it is not the same thing the Holy Ghost is doing. There are some people through this teaching, you are receiving the training of a warrior. Make sure you discern. There are people you are receiving the training of an athlete. There are people you are receiving a training of one who needs to know how to protect what is given to him. God, by this training, week in, week out, for some of you, you have not even started the training of a warrior. He decided to start with you on how to keep. So every time you see people praying the prayer of a warrior, you laugh because the level of your own training is just to protect you. Don't worry, keep the class going. Eventually. So don't be surprised. God has never told you to fast for 40 days. He has never told you to pray. It doesn't mean he won't say it. You are still in another training that does not necessitate those equipments. You will get to a point in life for some of you, the reason why God did not start with the training of a warrior is because you had the privilege of being close to a warrior. So there are battles you didn't need to fight. Somebody else's victory, you are still enjoying it. But make no mistakes about it. There is a battle with your name on it. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. If you fight alone, your race is incomplete. Have you finished? If you finished alone, your race is not complete. These three things must be captured in your life and your destiny. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. Some people have fought. They even finished. But when they got to the finish line, they didn't find their soul again. What shall it profit a man? In, in the process of running, they left the major things in life, looking for money, looking for fame, and they lost their soul. Other people lost their bishopric. At the end of their life, when God showed them the blueprint of their destiny, they were told that they were supposed to be mighty apostles and revivalists, but they found out that they ended up being civil servants till they finished. They lost a bishopric. He says, I have kept the faith. Are we together so when you come to church don't come to listen to what you want come to listen to what uh, listen for the things that are needed and don't be surprised when God suddenly switches in his training with you and becomes unusually strict he did not change his view is another kind of training he's giving you and don't stop somebody from being trained as a warrior just because you have been trained as an athlete because there are times that you can see you can be be trained as an athlete or one who will keep secrets and you look at the rigorous training of a military man you can go to him and say no god does not train like this my own god only trains you on how to keep things that's a dangerous theology because everybody in his lifetime you must be trained to fight. You must be trained to finish. You must be trained to keep. Turn it into a prayer request. I obtain grace, oh God. The grace to submit to the training that builds me to fight. I obtain grace. Someone is praying. To submit to the training that empowers me to finish. I obtain grace to submit to the training that helps me to keep and preserve my bishopric the mandates given to me in my life and destiny go ahead and pray are you praying no i as sin 
No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Ah. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No eye has seen, said. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work till Christ. One more time. No eye has seen, said. God has prepared for me. Till Christ be formed in me. Till your glory is formed in me. Your wisdom be formed in me. So I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me That's why you are here It's a training For some of you here Find strength You are going through the training of a warrior The nature of the job description of your destiny does not just you are not just going to be keeping your bishopric there are battles to fight that you have no idea of and you have to be trained like the mighty men of David the Bible says those men became mighty one of them stood in one position and fought 800 people slew them with the sword and the sword would not leave his hand someone trained him so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me yes I submit to your work till Christ be formed in me you can miss certain classes in the highest institution of learning and you can read up during exam there are times you may be maybe sick or you may be busy or just careless and you may not attend certain lectures when you hear that is the time for an exam there's what we call tutorial and you can sit down and in three hours summarize the lecture but in the school of destiny any class you miss even if it's after 30 years you must write that exam again you can get anointing and miss character 101 character 201 and after 30 years the absence of character 201 even though you have anointing will reduce you back you have to sit down and pass that exams you can study anointing 101 and forget finance 501 and say it does not matter the cry of your children, the cry of your wife. Are we together? The cry of everything around you will bring you back to that school. Listen, it is true that no knowledge is a waste, but every time is not conducive to learn everything. Imagine a woman of 55 years wearing um, a short, you know, skirt and blouse this thing that they wear in primary school and you sit down in the midst those students are young their minds are still alive a woman of 55 years in primary school congratulations for her courage but she will most likely keep getting zero in everything because she will be sleeping when other students are alive 
and it is not wrong if she did what she should do she should be sleeping correctly at that time listen there are some of you I don't mean to scare you but you came to know Jesus Christ late there are some of you your family had altars you don't have any leverage of godliness to give you an edge in life some of you right now what you are learning is not even for your destiny yet what you are learning is to correct the rubbish that you met before you now start stabilizing for your destiny so when somebody whose father is a missionary whose mother is a prayer warrior whose wife is an intercessor whose first son is a prophet can he can miss service for three weeks they have these systems of advantage but for you is witches and wizards all kinds of demonic people around you and you also join to miss the service till christ be formed in me let me tell you in this kingdom the king's business requires haste are we together you've heard me say it takes time to know god you know let me tell you sincerely when I see the kind of attention and the laxity sometimes that believers show towards the things of God, there are times that people come to church, a message is preaching like this, and they are browsing, they are just gisting and laughing and saying, in fact, I'm just, I'm enjoying myself, honestly, this place, what you said is correct, and they are not learning anything. When you come to the house of God and the word comes, anything that distracts you, find out what the bible says is the name of that thing it is the devil it doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever five minutes of accurate training being taught the word of god will give you the tools for some of you you are almost done with your training of a warrior maybe what you are receiving tonight is the helmet and you can stand and heaven can clap for you and say we can go to the next training some of you, the day we gave the sword, you were not there. You didn't come to church and you were careless about it. So you are a warrior without a sword. Because the day the training that gives you the sword is there, you were not there. And you didn't care to listen. There are some of you, as you are like this, you are already in the battleground, but you are naked from head to toe. You need to listen to the things that will equip you fast. Because the, the, the war sound is about to start and it does not care whether you are prepared or not. The Bible says there were cries in Rama. The little children were innocent but they were, did not have the training of military people. And you would think life would spare them because they were children. They all died. Man of God. Could it be that the teaching you are about to hear tonight is what you need for this season in the ministry for someone you are watching online and God is already speaking to you you have learned how to fight but you've not learned how to finish be careful so that you do not clap for yourself too long you can fight but unfortunately if the exam that is set before you requires an athlete you are in trouble Students are allowed to read everything. Our school of ministry students wrote their exams, I think it was last week or so, a week before last. And they were taught across a number of courses. They will not be told what question will come out. Are we together? The student can have an idea, but as a good student, you read everything. When you get to the exam hall, because you have read and you are fast, is that true? When they ask questions across several subjects, you can respond. But there are students who just guess where they want and just read. And then they get to the exam hall, question one to five. None of it was what they read. Did they read? Yes. Did they read well? No. I'm preparing for destiny. I agree. But let me see what you are doing. For 10 years, all you have been doing is focusing on battle. You will be surprised that the fight you want to fight, God has put you in a ministry where that grace will do that fight for you. And by the time you will be having your own fight, you should have used the time to learn how to run. So that when that battle comes, your training plus, the training there will give you a leverage and you will simply move. Listen, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Every dimension of training you need in your life, you will not lose. Yeah.
you will submit yourself and you will learn you will be thoroughly trained some of you have gone through the training of a warrior you have gone through the training of an athlete but you have not gone through the training you have not learned the dynamics of how to keep what is given to you until the end hmm. help us holy spirit that's not my message oh. that's 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 a charge i just shared with you my devotion <laughs> hallelujah Now let's go to the teaching wherever we stop we'll pray i know we'll finish in jesus name the road map to a triumphant destiny the road map to a triumphant destiny tonight's teaching is very powerful and truly it will change your life the road map to a triumphant destiny hallelujah before the coming of uber and bolt people had to make do with cabs it would take a cab from one location to the other and the major trouble with that pattern of transportation was that many times the driver would have to know the location where you are exactly by head and would have to know where he needs to take you all and there are times where both the person going and the person driving don't even know where they are know where they are going are we together and so it was a serious challenge there are people who would spend over 30 minutes on a journey of 10 minutes simply because there was no accurate system of knowing the place and the advantage of you know businesses like uber and bold they did not give you a car necessarily they didn't even give you the ability to learn how to drive they introduced the gps system to make it available are we together now so that it can become a bridge that it is possible that even though by memory you may not know where your passenger or your whoever it is that that is making the order you may not know where that person needs to go but there is a device that can help connect you from where you are to where you need to be or where that person needs to be and that simple thing that was introduced has now made people to prefer that pattern of transporting themselves to a regular cab it's incredible how just introducing a system that provides a road map changed the dynamics of people's appetite as far as patronizing the transport business is concerned are we together and so you see that it is not it is not enough to know that you have a great life and a great destiny it's important for you to know that a road map is required there has to be a road map that guides you from where you are to the place that you need to be failure to have a road map will make you lose destiny and end up in shame and end up with regrets Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19. The Bible very clearly tells us that every believer in Christ, because in Christ we are the justified, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the Bible tells us that in Christ and by reason of the provisions of redemption, our path, it says, is as the shining light that shineth more and more. You've heard me say more and more is the heritage of the saints. Are we together? The Bible has designed a destiny or God himself has designed and revealed through scripture the more and more destiny for the believer. He says it shines more and more unto the perfect day. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so there is an expected end in fact some versions will say a future and a hope there is a future in christ 
there is a future for your destiny are we still together however ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 popular scripture ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 i hope we're still together it says the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city remember our uber example the man is not foolish as an insult he's foolish because he focused on the city but he did not focus on the road map the problem was not knowing that there is a city the problem was knowing how to go to the city knowing that you have a great destiny in christ is a good information but that alone would not help you actualize your prophetic destiny in christ are we together so we have a great destiny every one of us in christ a prophetic destiny regardless the level and the area god would want to use you whether in ministry in business in government in family it does not matter we have a great destiny in christ the bible says those he foreknew he predestined are we together he called he justified and he glorified the end of the journey is your glorification now let me present to you a road map if you follow the road map that i'm about to show you tonight i give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture that you will arrive at a triumphant destiny a destiny that is full of beauty and color that god will be so greatly glorified in your life and all through your lifetime if that is you shout a loud amen yeah. daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 very popular scripture but let's see what god has to teach us about this scripture today hmm. and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries the b part is my verse of emphasis but the people that do know their god shall be strong and shall do exploits let's read the b part together from the word but ready one to read but the people that do know their god uh-huh shall be strong and shall do exploits so this promise is for people not animals not birds not inanimate things as we know it says the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits now in biblical exegesis please listen carefully theologically speaking now when you are drawing forth light from scripture there are rules that you follow number one is that in in understanding scripture the first approach is to treat it literally are we together because more than a prophetic book or in addition to being a prophetic book the bible is a compendium that contains literature the bible is an archaeological material the bible is also a historical material are we together and not everything in the bible is prophetic at plain sight there are some things that mean exactly what they say so in approaching scripture your first approach should be to try to interpret it directly verbatim as it is written if it does not make scriptural and natural sense then you would need what the bible calls the presence of two or three witnesses you would have to bring other scriptures that express the same thought so that you can now look at it contextually and now find out if it will make sense by combining other scriptures and then looking at the verses before or after if it still does not make the kind of sense you want then at that point you will have to buy into the wisdom of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation are we together to draw out the prophetic meaning if you were asked to interpret the dream that pharaoh had you most likely will fail because i am shocked at the interpretation that joseph gave over that dream are we together that cows fat cows ate lean cows how in the world does a cow mean time? How in the world does an ear of corn mean time? 
my first interpretation to that dream will be pharaoh you are under attack this is witchcraft abundance is eating poverty that's going to be my inter i'm being honest with you and yet pharaoh is saying there's nothing witchcraft there this is simply the course of time happening so there are things that when you look at it physically it does not make sense but now when you approach it from a prophetic dimension it will now make sense are we together back to this scripture now you will understand why i said everything i said no 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 not exodus 40 let's do daniel 11 again so it says but the people that do know their god now there is a contextual meaning for this you have to read the verses before and after and then you fit it within the context that it was used but because the bible is also a prophetic book are we together you can still draw forth a very supernatural lesson from it that has nothing to do with the context as discussed i think this is the mistake that most people have sometimes theologians and people who submit themselves to learning scripture when they see that men and women of god draw out prophetic meanings from certain scripture they say it is wrong no you don't have a right to say it is wrong it's a prophetic book it is only that in order of priority there is a contextual meaning are we together and if you focus on the prophetic meaning and lose the contextual meaning then you would not have done justice to that scripture but if you understand the contextual meaning you have the right based on the prophetic character of scripture to derive a prophetic meaning from it are we together i'm teaching you this so that when you are listening to the message of a man of god and you hear him say something else about his scripture whereas based on maybe a higher level of study you see that mm -mm, from a contextual standpoint that person failed but god provided that prophetic meaning will still be able to reveal something about the character of the kingdom. The Spirit of God will still honor it. Only that when you are mentoring people to be of stature and maturity, and you are teaching them the word, then you will need to be able to teach them to understand from a theological and a contextual standpoint, while still holding on to that prophetic meaning. So you know that this is actually what the Bible was saying. However, I can still use it to relate to this. Are we together now? Now I want to give the interpretation for that verse. Daniel 11. That really is our key verse of study tonight. The Bible starts by giving us three keys that represent the major roadmaps and the junctions to our destiny. Number one, the Bible starts with the statement, know their God. Knowledge. Mark the word know. The second word that I want us to pay attention to is the word be. And then the third word I want us to pay attention to is the word do. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen carefully. But the people that do know shall be and shall do. Are we together? Forget what else they know and what else will happen. The people that do know shall be and do. Now, let me read it for you. Are you ready? Please look up. The only people that do are those who be and those who be are those who no the only people who can do exploits are those who be strong and the only people who can be strong are the people who know let's discuss these three words the first is the word no no talks of knowledge b talks of transformation do talks of action the Bible defines for us the prophetic roadmap to a triumphant destiny. That if these three phases of approaching life and destiny is not captured, you will never be able to actualize your prophetic destiny. Knowledge, transformation, and action. But they are not as cheap and empty as they sound. Let's explore by the Spirit. What does it mean and what does it imply to know? 
The Bible immediately tells us that actualizing destiny is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent more than desire dependent you can have desire but until and unless you have the requisite kind and level of knowledge that your destiny demands you may never actualize a great destiny are we together what is the implication of knowing or knowledge number one for you to know anything at all in life especially that which relates to god and your destiny number one you must be meek enough to receive that is the first implication of knowing it is mandatory that for knowing to be a reality in your life you must be meek enough to receive james chapter 1 and verse 21 we're discussing knowing now and the implication james 1 21 it says wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness someone say with meekness one more time please say with meekness with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul that means the realm of knowing is only for people who are meek the moment you do not have the quality of meekness knowing will never be a possibility with you acts chapter 20 and verse 32 popular scripture and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified he's saying listen i know the value of the word of god i know the value in this sense of spiritual knowledge it is able to give you an inheritance to build you up capacity and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified there are many people who cannot arrive at the place of destiny because they do not know and knowing is far from them because there is no meekness at heart is someone learning what else does it mean to know or what does it take to get to the realm of knowing number two for you to be a knowledgeable person you must master the art of asking questions please write it down dr mudok would say a question is the seed for an answer that means you are not authorized for an answer until you can ask a question are we together most people do not know in life because they do not know how to ask questions questions are very powerful one day one of the fathers of faith in this nation was talking to me and he was teaching me the power of questions and he said apostle always ask questions always ask questions always ask questions the next time we spoke he said the same thing again he said always ask questions i wrote it down and i made up my mind do you know those who know how to ask questions never stay in the same position for long are, you, are we listening now but don't assume you know how to ask questions matthew chapter 7 seven and eight it says ask and you shall receive seven and eight ask and you shall receive and it shall be given unto you that means if it is not given unto you is because you did not ask is that true seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be open unto you let's read verse 8 together one to read for everyone that asketh receive it just stop there so the blessing of receiving from asking is for everyone everyone regardless gender regardless race regardless whatever your orientation the moment you are someone who can ask you immediately become a receiver the gift of information the gift of access to knowledge most people do not know how to ask 
James chapter 4 and verse 2, Apostle James was teaching us again and he made a very profound statement. He said, ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. James 4, 2. He says, ye fight and war and ye have not simply because ye ask not. There are many people who are grounded and stagnated in life simply because they have not mastered the art of asking questions. Let me tell you um, my definition of what it means to ask. I'll give you three definitions. Number one, to ask means to request information or to request for an answer by saying or writing. That's the first thing. It means if you want to ask or if you are asking, you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer, either by verbalizing it or by writing it. My first definition of asking. The second definition of asking means to invite into or to allow into your space. That means when you ask, you are giving permission for someone or something to come into your space. Powerful. When you ask, it means you are authorizing that information, that realm of reality to come freely into your space. Number three, asking means to inquire the price of or the cost of. If you are asking, it also means you want to know the cost implication of that which you want to have. So there are many people who ask, but all they are doing is just making requests. They have not sat down to count the cost. You're counting the cost. The cost dimension of life is also asking. Is God helping us? This is what it means to know. The people that do know their God, in order to know, you must be meek enough to receive. Number two, you must master the art of asking questions. How, is, how does this happen? How does this happen? The man who came to share the testimony, one of those, those men that came from the East, I was struck by what he said, his honesty to admit. That was the part of the testimony that blessed me. Many of you didn't hear so much, only the amount that the chief would collect and you were clapping. I'm joking. Are we together? But I listened to something that he said. He said, I've been in the faith for a while, but he was honest enough to admit that the things that I had were not producing for me. There was a man who made that kind of confession in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw what happened to the three Hebrew boys, he was honest and open and said, blessed be the God of Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we together now? And he wrote a decree. He was not ashamed to acknowledge. Listen, when your way is not working, stop trying. Provided there are results happening, you must humble yourself. This thing I'm doing, I've been in Abuja for 10 years, 15 years. I don't even have a plot of land now. Don't just credit everything. I, I, I minister deliverance for people, but listen, we're not stupid people. It is not everything that is just demons because there is a dimension of deliverance that is simply a transfer of responsibility. There are many people who don't want to take responsibility over their lives. Adam still missed it in the Garden of Eden. There were no causes. There was no demon. His mother, he didn't even have a mother to say there's anything foundation. There was no foundation from mother and father in the Garden of Eden and yet he still failed. Are we together? You must be willing to ask. My way is not working. I humble myself. I've been doing ministry, but there is no growth. There is no increase. When I teach my people, even when I joke, they don't laugh. They are always angry and frowning at me. 
I think the people are wicked. No, your view of them is that they are wicked. Jesus said, come and learn of me. That means there is something you don't know. He has vetted you and said, come and learn, come and learn. Someone you need to in your mind prophesy to yourself that I need to learn. There are things I do not know. Are we together? What is the implication? What does it take to know? Remember, we're dealing with three words. Have I lost you? What does it take to know? Number three. In order to gain knowledge that translates to your advancement, you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. When the Bible says the people that do know, it takes a lot to be in the place of knowledge. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. Matthew 13, 14. Matthew 13 from verse 44 to 46. Hear what the Bible says. I love Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Is that in your Bible? It says, the which a man had found, he hid it, and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he has and buy the field. Look at this kind of man. He found treasure, and with respect to that treasure, nothing else that he had mattered again. He could sell anything to buy it. Next verse. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. 46. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Apostle, where do I get the money to buy the truth? You get it by selling the inferior truths. Are we together? The money it takes to buy the truth comes by selling what else is not the truth. There is a transaction that happens. Nobody has the capital to buy the truth by default. Get my message. I preached it in um, Takorad in Ghana. Buy the truth. You can get it on Koinonia Global. Please listen to it very carefully. I teach there that there are five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Currency number one is meekness. Meekness and humility is the first currency we use to buy the truth. Are we together? The second currency we use to buy the truth with is honor. Another currency we use to buy the truth is hunger. When you do not have the currency of hunger, you cannot buy the truth. Are we learning? The Bible tells us that a man found goodly pearls and he sold everything to have more capital and he now bought what he considered his treasure. Let me tell you this, please look up. Most people are not in the place of knowledge because they are unwilling to sacrifice their time. They are unwilling to sacrifice energy and to sacrifice their resources. With all due respect to everyone here, I am amazed and humbled at the amount of international guests that come in every week from around the world. You would think it's a conference that is happening all the time. There are people who would travel as far as Australia, US, to come to Koinonia for a normal service. We're not even talking about, of course, every service is supernatural, but not a dedicated service to minister to people. And some of these people, you will be surprised. They would come down to Abuja and some of them will still travel to follow some of the ministrations within the time. And you are wondering, couldn't they just sit down and follow online? There's something they are looking for. Are we together? And yet there are people who don't even stay. They stay a two, three minutes distance. They just look through their window and once they see someone falling, they say, wow man is powerful though and then they go back and I'm not being sarcastic please but you look at the life of that person there is nothing that that has beauty and color can I tell you the truth a hospital does not go around looking for patients 
if you are sick you are the, no matter how sick you are even if you cannot walk you must find somebody who picks you to the hospital a hospital just keeps being equipped but it will never go around i don't know any hospital that lifts from the foundation going around to every home we live in a generation where we want truth and knowledge at our terms mm -mm. is the thinking of mediocres when you truly desire knowledge you seek and you pursue it with everything within you hallelujah mm. very very powerful you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your resources to buy it. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, please. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandment with thee, uh -huh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. 3. It says, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding reading to six verse four if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the lord giveth wisdom but he doesn't give everybody he gives those who seek passionately and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding to who to the one who is seeking as silver you are my strength when i am weak you are the treasure that i seek you are my only no I'm seeking you as a precious jewel Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my own Can I tell you? Respectfully speaking, there are people who are not passionate about anything There is nothing in their lives that can keep them awake in the night There is nothing in their life that can make them forget food there is nothing in their life that can make time pass without them being you will not be great that way there has to be something in your life that keeps you awake jesus said my meat my satisfaction comes from doing and finishing the will of him that has sent me are we together there are many people who are very passive if you are passing and you see something on tv you just watch oh wow I just learned something now but they never pursue knowledge the people that do know are the people that seek with meekness the people that do know are the people who are willing to ask questions and never stop till they find answers the people that do know are the people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy and their resources to buy the truth number four the people that do know are there are the people who have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge that is the fourth price it takes to be in the realm of those who know you must have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge value and retain superior knowledge there are many many people who even by the mercies of god they encounter valuable knowledge but they have not mastered the art of placing value on and retaining knowledge that is useful the same matthew 13 let's look at 47 and 48 matthew 13 47 and 48 please look up again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind everybody say every kind usually this is truly the product of passion when you pursue knowledge with passion you will gather every kind useful knowledge useless knowledge knowledge that is structured knowledge that is scattered your assignment is in verse 48 which when it was full they drew to shore 
and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and cast the bad away. Are we Bible students? Sometimes you would not have the luxury of having refined knowledge. This is where the gift of pastors who are according to the heart of God comes in. Are we together now? This is why you must value what you are receiving here and any other place when you find a man of God who has walked with the Spirit through pain, through tears, through study and experience to filter out. This is what we do before we come to church. Matthew 13, 48. You, you cannot believe the amount of research and study and prayer and deep thought and contemplation that comes into bringing one message. What you receive is the filtered, finished version. But I'm telling you, classically speaking, if you want knowledge and you pursue knowledge, please go to verse 47. Don't forget it. You are going to gather, media helpers 47, you are going to gather every kind. There are times where I'm researching maybe on the Holy Spirit and then I'm studying and my goodness, you will see some videos with some kind of demonic occultic information. It's part of the price of seeking. If you seek, you will find. Are we together? Some of you want to study about finances and you will meet all kinds of nonsense that you, it is don't be don't be angry in the midst of all that rubbish ask those who mine have you seen people who mine gold it's not pure refined gold that just comes and you put it in your pocket and go and sell it no there is nothing you mine from the earth that comes pure when you mine it from the earth you now sit down 48 when you sit down then you gather. Do you know it takes time and sacrifice? Okay, this one I found now. Let me read this article they wrote on the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a woman with this nonsense. And you throw it away. And you don't feel bad. Sometimes you spend the whole day buying a book. And midway, you have to read half of the book to know it is wrong. Are we together? The cover is excellent. It starts with a powerful scripture. It's halfway. The Holy Ghost will say, no, stay. Holy Spirit, you would have just told me from the bookshop that this thing is going to waste my time. Truly, we live in a generation that does not respect knowledge. The sacrifice of knowledge. Are we together? So, you must be willing to value knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, we're reading from verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from your eyes. So they can depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. They are life to those who find them. Not those who want them. Not those who want them. Those who find them. And health to their flesh. Can I tell you the truth? When people do not pay the price to retain knowledge. This is why this generation has no excuse to fail. Because technology has made retention possible. Are we together? There was a time where if a man says something and quotes a scripture... That is the scripture tied to your next level. If you didn't hear it, sorry for you. You have to either buy the tape or come next year for that conference. But now you can go back. You know you are a student of knowledge when a 15 minutes message takes three hours to finish. Because for every one or two minutes you are stopping. Has that happened to you? A message of one hour. You hold on with your laptop or iPad. You come back later and on again. The fire was too much. You calm down. You are not in a rush. God, what are you saying? And light will come out of that knowledge. Revelation, I've told you, is not just knowledge. Knowledge is important. But revelation is understanding mixed with knowledge. Are we learning? The people that do know, a quick recap, are the people that, number one, 
must be meek enough to receive that's what it takes to know the people that do know are number two the people who master the art of asking questions and don't stop the people that do know number three are people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy their resources to buy the truth number four the people who know are the people who place value on knowledge and have sustained the ability to retain superior knowledge hallelujah i can tell you retaining knowledge is not the issue of being dull or intelligent is the issue of being serious with your destiny mm -hmm. there are people who cannot tell you last week's message they don't even remember honestly frankly speaking sometimes your mind can play games you can forget but they can't even remember any point no. ought not to be so the people who know that means if you want an excelling destiny please listen carefully whether in ministry whether in whatever it is it was bishop oyedeko who taught us that when they were about to build covenant university he said he researched a number of world-renowned universities there were other universities already but he, he paid the price to study them put up a panel that understudied it are we together and then at the end of it he came to a conclusion that covenant university he wanted it to become the new generation harvard now there's landmark and they are all making tremendous contributions are we together Many years ago, I was in Afeba Balolo University to preach. And my goodness, when I got to hear about the standard and some of the things happening there, and that that man was then at that time, I think he was in his 80s now, I don't know, or maybe 80s, I don't know how old he is now. And his passion, he would still come to the office and sit down and coordinate all kinds of things. I had to tell myself, anybody that says he's too much, think again. Some of us are already young, 25, and they tell you, ah, you are tired, you have tried. Nothing, you are not impacting anything. You have not utilized even 10% of the, the, the mental potential that the Spirit of God gave you. Please challenge yourself in the name of Jesus that you will go for structured knowledge and don't stop. A young man who is sleeping 12 hours, you are in the first level of your life. You will wake up towards the last level of your life. When other people are sleeping, trouble will keep you awake. It's not a cause. It's because you have not prepared your way before the Lord. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Most of the time people used to live a fake life would have been used in getting knowledge that produces what is genuine. Are we together? The time it takes to hide around cars and snap and say it's your car. The time it takes to sit down in an office and say you were in London. All that time is the same time you can settle down and, and study in your one room. Even with a candle. Shabalakatos. Lord, I know that in the name of Jesus, things will not remain like this. And the spirit of grace is honoring your sincerity and your investment. But the people that do know. Are we together? Very quickly, let's go to the second word, B. The people that do know their God. Knowledge, as powerful as it is, is not enough. Knowledge must translate to transformation. Now, there are many people who know, they've paid the price to know in terms of awareness, but they are shocked that what they know is the truth, and yet it has not produced in their life. Knowing and doing will cause you trouble. Knowledge must become transformation before you take action. Are we together? Please give it to us. There are, you know, many years ago, I was studying particularly about finances. I, I wanted to make sure that I had a destiny of beauty and color financially. And every time I read the books that people wrote about finances, they didn't write the businesses that they were doing. 
They will just write things like character, think well, value relationships. I said, these guys are liars. What are you doing that is bringing you money? That's all I want to know, how foolish I was. They were focused on my becoming. I was focused on doing. Many of you have been doing for years because when you do what you have not become, life will see, that there will be a red card there that will be shown you. You are doing something illegal. Are we together? Be strong. Let's look at the word be. The word be there talks of transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To change states, spiritually, mentally. What does it take? The people who are transformed, the people who become, are those that number one, those who recognize that you are not yet your best version. The only people who contend for transformation are those who admit, thank God for what I am and where I am, but this is not the best version of me. That there is more. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. Those who will contend for transformation beyond the realm of knowledge are those who will recognize and acknowledge that you are not yet your best version. I tell myself that all the time. Joshua Selman, thank God for how far God has brought you. Thank God for everything God is using people to say across the globe. But be sure that you are not yet your best version. There are still virgin heights and virgin versions of me that are still calling me to come up higher. Virgin levels of power. Virgin levels of understanding and illumination. Sometimes the demon that stops your progress is your current level. It's not an attack from the realm of the spirit. Where you are can greatly stop where you need to be. Philippians 3.12 Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. This is Paul. You have to understand the man who is speaking here. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Even without meeting Jesus, he was not a, he was not a non-entity. Paul was a scribe. He was a doctor of the law. Intelligence par excellence. Acknowledged by God. Acknowledged by men. Even the enemies of the cross. They acknowledge his intelligence. And then he encountered Jesus directly. And then he spent 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia. Under all kinds of training. That's the man who is talking. Not that I have already attained. It's like a professor emirate to saying i don't know much he's talking to his students so i don't know much a professor who has been a professor for 20 years a foremost researcher one of the few authorities across the globe and they say professor what do you have to tell us and he says well my dear people i can only attempt i don't know much ah. who now marks the script when every other professor who was there was accredited by that one man and yet he's telling you he does not know much. Listen, those who contend for transformation are those who always know that everything I am now is only for now. There is still more. Please give us that scripture. Let's finish it up. Is someone learning tonight? He says, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. 13. We're reading to 14. Brethren, I count not myself. You count me to have apprehended. You call me Paul the learned. Paul the anointed. Paul the great. But I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind he didn't say forgetting the bad things that are behind i know you received an award in january congratulations but it's over you will never receive an award for that realm again so you drop it pat yourself at the back and after that you move forward can i tell you forward thinkers are people who they rejoice at their current level of success but they do not stop there they move forward they move higher but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, 14, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, those who become 
are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. In this man standing before you is still a better man of God. In this man standing before you is still the potential for a more anointed man. Thank God for the bodies that were healed. What of the ones that were not healed yet? Are you saying God cannot touch them? God is true. The problem is the limitation of the vessels. We have not yet contended for that level. You must be honest and sincere and strict with yourself. Champions don't let their tears spare the discipline of pressing forward. When people commend me on what God is doing here in the ministry and across the globe, I thank them, but I know that, um, no, 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 no. We, this is, you, you always hear me say, this is a step out of the cave. Never get to a point in your life where you say, is there anything else? You are dead already. Even in heaven, John was caught up in heaven in the spirit and when he was in heaven he wrote the letters to the seven churches and he still had a voice that said come up hither in other words in heaven still come higher for someone god is already speaking to you the version of you of 2019 is still the version of you today because you have not seen anything to challenge you higher man of god there are still grounds believe me Man of God, there are still realms of power. This is why pride is dangerous. Because pride is a full stop in your life where you should put a comma. Hallelujah. No matter how powerful a meeting is, if you ask me how was the meeting, I would just say fine. That answers it. Oh boy, so what should, else should I say? Fine. Ten people got off from the wheelchair out of how many we have to verify how many people were on wheelchair in the city where you came versus the number we are grateful but it should not sponsor mediocrity for someone God is challenging you right now stop celebrating any arrival even when you have not started there is still there are many heights stretch yourself Transformation requires a recognition that you are not yet your best version, that there is more. Number two, those who become, be, those who are transformed, are we together? Are those who realize and recognize that changing, listen carefully, for you to be transformed, it will demand you changing or upgrading your references and your models. You can never be transformed until you sustain the courage to change your models and change your references. For some of you, the reason why you are where you are is that the reference you are using is too small, is too low. Transformation cannot happen until you have a superior reference, a superior model. Someone who is called into the educational sector, for instance, by the time that person has a degree and his reference is a professor and one who has PhDs and DSCs like a thermometer, by the time you're a master's holder, that is, that is, that is, um, that is commendable. But because your model is high, even when you have PhD, it looks like you are just having a school living certificate because the reference is high. Are we together? If you are a man of God and your reference is very high, your model is high, even when you are doing exceptional things based on the context of your environment, because your bar is high, not from a competitive standpoint. This is, we're talking about someone who wants to maximize destiny. There are many people, if they were Jesus, they will not need to die again. After that triumphant entry, straight, they will go to heaven. That you climb that donkey, that's the end. From that donkey straight, you will leave a mess under. No apostle strain, no nothing. The mission would have died within one year. But Jesus did a thorough work, not distracted by his results. He would finish a powerful crusade and sit down with one woman and be talking as if he's not the same person who raised the dead. 
and never make reference to what he did before. He would not talk to her and say, Madam, I'm giving you 10 minutes and you're wasting my time. Do you know what happened to Lazarus? You are playing with me. You've not heard about me. Look at this. When Jesus resurrected, you thought that you would take the time to enjoy and celebrate. Resurrection is not a small thing. You know what happened in hell. As soon as he got up, he said, listen, I'm here for 40 more days. We are behind in our lectures. All of you come together. Oh, you are the one, you are risen, I'm risen. You've seen me, that's all right, sit down. Let's get to work. 40 days, non-stop. Afterwards, he told them, now I can go. When you get to the world of champions, celebration is minimal. Only enough to motivate you and give God glory. And then you fire on. Are we together? Hmm. So you must change your references. I've taught you here that transformation is difficult without a reference. You cannot become nothing. You need to become something exact. My question is what or who is your reference? If your reference, respectfully speaking, is a mediocre. You see, there are references that when you put, even if you don't go high, you will still feel comfortable. Watch this. Let me go down just for sake of explanation. If, sorry for those who may not be able to see me, but if this is my reference, watch this, this first step, this is my reference. Do I need to jump seriously to get there? Even if it's by mistake, I can stumble there. But can you stumble here by mistake? So while you are here, those who are here are clapping for you and say, what else is left? You must be able to focus. And then you climb higher. And those who are down are saying, this is too much. Uh, what kind of anointing are you looking for? Whereas there are results that only those who are standing here can produce. Is someone learning now? You must change your references. You must change your models. Upgrade your references. Upgrade your models. What kind of church do you want to produce? What kind and quality of believers do you want to produce? Are we together? What do you want the testimony of the average believer under your care to look or sound like? It's not just having a crowd of people. You must be interested in quality. Is someone learning? Number three. What is the implication and what does it take to be? What does it take to be transformed? Are you ready? Those who become and those who are transformed are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Those who contend for transformation are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Just because a mindset has been there for a long time does not mean it is correct. Africa, we need to trust God for grace. We are people of grace and potential. Now, let me tell you, when I talk of dropping wrong mindsets, I'm not respectfully speaking. I don't necessarily mean picking Western mindsets. I mean picking scriptural mindsets. You can drop an African mindset and pick a Western mindset and you are still in the same place spiritually. So I don't mean getting a more technological error. That's not what I'm teaching. Africa's error may be crude. Then you now pick and advance a technological error. It's still error. Are we together? You will never contend for transformation until you are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Let me confess to you up front that this is very, very hard because we usually are emotionally connected to our mindsets. If no matter how wrong it is, there is an emotional affinity you have towards your mindset.
and stripping yourself of that mindset to embrace a new scriptural and superior belief system is almost like asking you to remove your clothes and stand naked there are people who would rather die than to contend for scriptural transformation respectfully speaking we come there are six geopolitical zones within Nigeria and I submit to you that every geopolitical zone has its blessing and advantage territorially speaking but every geopolitical zone has its limitation programmed by demon spirits territorially if you want to rise and do much for the kingdom you have to obtain grace from God to put a superior reference that is higher than your territory the, the scripture God gave me that delivered me from the limitation of my territory was John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. That thing changed my life. Sent from God. That means the physical point of my arrival is not really the basis for my victory. It is where I came from. I never came from heaven. I was sent. He didn't say there was a man who came from God. That means my arrival was the conclusion of an intelligent discussion between divinity. They saw the space that my relevance can produce as far as kingdom come. I was sent with intention. When I arrived at earth, my parents gave me a name. Lovely name, by the way. May God bless them. They are watching. Next verse, verse 7. The same came for a witness. So it tells you immediately the basis of your victory. He that cometh from above, he says, is above all. And I made up my mind that I refuse to be limited by the thinking and the influences that are associated with my region. No. Is someone learning? A young lady was crying and complaining to her mom about life and she just felt that life was unfair and she was shouting and yelling at the mom and the mom didn't say a word the mom just went in front of a, a gas cooker a four four burner the one that has four compartments and the mom put three three pots and put water on them while the lady was yelling mommy are you hearing me life is unfair and in one of the pots that was boiling, she put an egg, E double G. In one of the pots that was boiling there, she put coffee. Are we together? And then in one of the pots, I can't remember again what she put there. Rat? Carrots, thank you. Are we together? And she allowed it for a few, for a few maybe some time and then she called the young lady and opened the pots and said tell me what you see and she found out that number one her observation was there was fire under the pot on all all three pots so they went through the same situation of heat are we together but for the egg that was fragile and could just you know fall to the ground and you would lose it it had now become hard and strong you could even peel the back and you would not destroy it for the carrots that seemed to be very hard now you could almost bend it and it would bend like this but she noticed something strange with the coffee the coffee looked like the smallest of the seeds there and when she put it the entire water had turned to the coffee color and she said all of them were subjected to the same situation one influenced the system and turned it to look like the color the other one became a victim became hard the other one became soft but the other one said i would not only change i would transform the system is someone learning now you can be one of these three some of you were very hard now some of you were very soft now some of you look very small and you're looking at yourself and say, small me in such a system. Learn from the coffee seed. It transformed everything there. Same thing happens with salt. You pick a pinch of salt and put it around and turn it and that's it. You don't see it again, but you taste the food. It will establish its presence there. Even if you keep, even if the food spoils, the taste of salt will still be there.
There are certain foods when they spoil, they will taste like something else. But as for salt, it will still be there. Is someone learning? You must be willing to drop age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs. Number four, those who become, those who contend for transformation are those who are ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Are we together? Let me take it again. Those who become, those who are transformed are those who are willing and are prepared to face the consequences and to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Let me tell you the truth. Contending for growth and progress comes with consequences. Sometimes unfavorable consequences. But if you really want to be transformed, you must be ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Daniel chapter 3. For sake of time, let's start from verse 6. Then we'll jump to verse 12 and we'll continue till I ask you to stop. This was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar, there was a 90 feet statue of pure gold that was built. And he said at the sound of whatever it is now, they should bow down. They would have bowed down and remained there. No promotion, no increase. But here it is. The Bible says, Whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall at the same hour be thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Now go to verse 12. The Bible says there are certain Jews. They were reporting them now. And O king, they have not regarded you. They have not served your gods. They have not worshipped the golden image that you have set up. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar heard this. He was angry. Listen to me. There are consequences for desiring to go forward. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side. The consequence of that decision was there was a storm. The disciples almost lost their life. Advancement is not convenient. Transformation is not convenient. It will change many things about you. When you make up your mind that you want to carry genuine spiritual power, you make up your mind that you want to be learned and sound in scripture, I submit to you, it will change many things. Are we together? They brought these men before the king, 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them and said, Is it true that you have violated my commands? 15, watch this now. He now gave them one last chance. Doesn't it look like what life does? Choose to remain here and be comfortable or go through the controversy that comes with advancement. 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you on this matter. Look at this gentleman. 18. He said, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. 18. But if not, but if not, I know based on the word of God that as I advance into this business, as I advance in ministry, this is what should be. But if not, I rather fail following God than to mark time in fear. Those who, listen, those who move forward and are transformed are people who are willing to go through the discipline and the consequences. There are many of you, please listen to me. There are many of you making a decision for Jesus and making a decision for a meaningful life may cost you the sponsorship of those who are currently helping you. They will make up your mind their minds and say I will never help you there are many people who are of many different faiths who came to Jesus Christ and their family members warned them and say listen we're giving you one last chance think about it and remain with status quo and find the comfort or make up your mind and they made up their minds and for five years nothing changed they really suffered as a result let me tell you the truth advancement comes with severe consequences making up your mind for Jesus. You would think that after such a bold statement, God would not even allow the story continue. He would step in. 
Do you know how frustrating it is to stand and defend the name of the Lord and the trouble they told you will happen still happens? As though God were not watching. 19. Learn something tonight. Nebuchadnezzar was angry at what he perceived to be their disdain and he commanded that they should heat the fire seven times hotter. Let's rush. 20. He commanded that the boys be cast into the fire. Next verse. And the boys were bound. As at the time they were tying them, brothers and sisters, God was watching in heaven. I wonder what they were saying. You thought that they were not afraid. They just said, God, you will come. It's a lie. They were humans. They were shaking like a leaf. So this is how we're going to die. But Lord, we defended you. How many of you know that there were people who stood before terrorists and they told them, renounce your faith and we'll kill you. They said we will not. They shot them and they died. Hmm. There are consequences when you want to go forward, my people. There are people today who would have been billionaires with compromise. But they gave up billions. Everybody called them fool, including we pastors. They say, you, there's a way you would have done this thing. You are, you are really stupid. And they felt stupid later on. Because they thought that at the end of living a nice life, their superior will call them and say, I've watched you. I shall bless you. They say, now that your tenure is over, get out of this place. Let the person who walk with us come. Do you know how difficult it is when your loving God makes you look stupid? When your honoring God makes you look stupid, you would have compromised and by now you would have had a job. But for three years you have refused. What of the politician who would have compromised and become a governor or a senator? He was given the offer and he said, no, for the sake of my faith. Is someone learning? Transformation is costly. It's not just sitting in your room and changing states. You must be ready to face and endure the consequences. Let's finish this scripture. 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fiery furnace was put so hot, it slew those that the men threw. 23. And the three boys fell down bound in the burning fires. There are times where God can stop you from even entering the fire. But there are times, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, you will still enter that fire. But trust him enough. Trust him enough. So you are making up your mind, you will never follow any man for money again. You are making up your mind, you are going to serve the Lord and have a, dignity, a, a destiny of dignity and color. And your friends can warn you. You know that your accommodation in Abuja, you know how it, it and where are you going to get 1.2 million from? And you make up your mind. And then your rent expires. And you drop your prayer request in a miracle service. And afterwards, your landlord is waiting for you. You flog it out and nothing seems to happen. You have a choice to go back. But I have said it here. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to move forward. Whether you go back or go forward, you are not where you were and you are not where you need to be. It is wiser to continue. Is someone learning? 25 he answered and said lo I see four men who are loose walking in the midst of the fire they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of God I don't know everything about God but there is something I know about God that when God decides to honor your pressing into him I've taught it here for many years you will look like a fool but the day your deliverer arises for many years, your church may not seem to grow because you have refused. You would not go and dapple your hand and collect any power, whatever. For many years, they will not promote you in the office because they told you that they should corporately collect bribe and you refused. They insulted you for being a Christian. You cried and said this and that and that. God can arise, oh. He does arise. And when God arises, he said, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. 26. Watch this. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and he said, ladies and gentlemen, this and that and that, come forth. And they came out in the midst of the fire. 27. We're stopping at 30. The princes, governors, captains and all those people were there. The Bible says, not a hair 
of their head was singed their bodies the fire had no power and there was no smell of fire that passed on them then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he gave a decree by reason of their courage to remain for someone God is speaking to you remain turning back is wasting the destiny of the thousands connected to you you have already started the journey of transformation don't go back when your father got to this point he was tired the mockery was too much he had to go back now you are suffering it by the time you go back your children will suffer it too it is better to press and finish do you know i vowed to god and i said everything if there are any negative things that came from my background i would rather pay the price and go through it as a person let me be the one to stand by god and win that war that all who come from me and all the generations after us are we together now yes some of us may need to make that decision the, the lineage of poverty that you came from. Now you want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Sometimes it may mean sacrificing 10 years of your comfort to contend for transformation. But if and when you do that, you would have started a dynasty of kingdom wealth and blessing. Are you willing to go that far? In many parts of Africa, when the missionaries came and they brought the gospel, some of them, when they waved their wives goodbye, they really meant it. Their wives knew they would not come back. They knew they would not come back. And yet they still went. Hallelujah. You must be ready to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Who is this that is staying in our house? You are always praying. You are not a pastor. But sir, you know the background. Don't pray anything. If you are going to continue praying and continue studying, you are getting out of my house. And sometimes you are going to have to make that choice. And you go out of your house, you carry your little bag, and you are strolling like a madman in the middle of the night. And you are saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Listen to my, the part of the teaching that I taught here in Koinonia, when God is silent. It is a painful thing when God is silent. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. He can be silent. The call for you at that point is to keep changing. Keep changing. Lord, but I love you. I thought by now I would have been able to pay this rent. I thought by now ministry would have opened up. I thought the business would have worked. Let me tell you the truth. There are many times in your journey towards destiny actualization that you will not have answers. Don't be under pressure to give answers. Wait for the answer to come. Especially the answer of where is your God. Anybody who asks you where is your God, if you answer it, you are wrong. You are not the one who should answer that question. <clears throat> the moment they say where is your God, that answer should be transferred back to God. You've heard me say, if you take the shame, you have been taking the glory. You can't be taking, God cannot be taking the glory and then you take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must take the shame together. You claim you are a man of God. Nobody has been healed. The people who are blessed, today 10 members, today 50 members, and someone will tell you there's something I can do and in one month your ministry will change. And sometimes it can be tempting because you are a human being. Somebody will say, I told you five years ago you will be a failure. This God thing, Remember, when you were on campus, I told you this stupidity will land you in trouble. Now, 10 years later, you are pastoring 20 members. I have an estate somewhere. There are times it looks foolish to stand on God's side. But when you stand there, as surely as the sun rises after night, I can tell you your deliverer will come. And when he comes, he will come in grand style. He will pick you in the presence of all who saw you. I'm speaking this prophetically for someone because for someone you came to church and every time you hear people prophesy, maybe you are a mother outside, maybe you are someone, maybe you are a man of God still in your spiritual, your walk with God and sincerely things are not working. Every time you see people testify here, you can't say they are lying, but from their testimony, you keep asking God, is it that you are not seeing me? 
I come early for miracle service by 10 o'clock I'm here nobody calls me nobody prophesies other people are falling down and rising I'm just there watching them as if God is not aware of me and then instead of things getting better it even gets worse after the miracle service it's like the louder I shout amen the more it does not happen can I tell you it is okay to cry it is not unscriptural even Jesus wept but one thing you are not allowed to do is to draw back listen very carefully the Bible says fear not I have redeemed you I have called you by name and you are mine it says when you pass through the waters I will be with you through the rivers it will not overwhelm you then it says when you walk through the fire when it has to do with fire you don't run you walk through the fire and I, I, I wish God would tell you you only walk for one year sometimes you will walk for a long time a long time a lonely part that does not make sense when job was sitting down ladies and gentlemen do you know what it meant if i were to interpret job's situation i would say this man must have been an evil man nemesis would have caught him the world would say the law of karma has caught him and that was a sincere man who sat down to the point that his last support you know what it means when your wife looks at you and says listen you know i love you we've been on this journey for a long time but please i prefer you dead so i can rest If some naysayer is talking somewhere, you don't care. But now your wife. And Job said, though he slay me. Mm. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Though he slay me. Some of you, your classmates will come and see you. And after 10, 20, 25 years of graduation, they are coming with their estates and their jeeps and everything. And you are there. They say, what are you doing now? I say, well... Uh, well, I'm, I'm a secretary in one church and they just nod their heads and say oh dear if you need any help please call my Nigerian office I live in Dubai now and there is a way people can say it that they rub it on your face and you just stand there and say God what is this if you have not gotten to this realm it's because there's something you are not doing right I assure you if it is the road to destiny, you must meet this realm someday. No, these are not realms you pray away. You only pray for grace to pass through it. The journey of becoming only happens in that wilderness. The journey of becoming does not happen when you are taking coffee and sipping. No, 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 no. It's a painful journey. For many years in your life, I, I, let me repeat it again. No matter the kind of leverage you have, if it is God you are seeking and the, his kingdom, there will be a level where nobody's sermon will really be able to matter to you again. You will have to be the preacher and the prophet of your destiny at that point. If it has not happened to you, I'm informing you ahead of time. Because for some of you, maybe you are about to enter that season. Remember what I taught you about trainings. You have been receiving the training of one who protects. So when you see warriors, you say, oh dear, I pity these people. Now you are about to begin the training of a warrior. Go and go to NDA and see how they train military men. Sometimes these men are asked to roll inside mud. You, you will say this is dehumanizing. But they are preparing them. And they kick them. Kick them again. Yes, sir. Ah. I feel no evil. By the water still my soul, my heart will trust in you, Lord. my heart will trust that though I walk through the valley, Lord, I fear no. Even when I don't trust in it, I can trust in you. 
even when I no longer trust in the future. Do you know there are times people can ask you, how is that future? And sincerely, if you have to be honest, you don't even know what to say again. There are times people, are you still in the ministry? Will you still continue? If you are honest, there are times you don't have an answer. Hear the word of the Lord. When you cannot trust in it, trust in him. When the boat can no longer carry you, trust in the person who is sleeping in that boat. My heart will trust in you, Lord. My heart will lean on you. My heart will cry to you, Lord. My heart. Hear me. There are realms you get to where no matter how strong you are, your tears will not ask you again. It will come by itself. You will stand there courageous. Sometimes maybe helping others through their storms. But there are times the tears will say, I've tried. I've waited for five years. It will have to come. Jesus, the miracle worker who raised others from the dead on his way to becoming that king of kings and lord of lords in experience. The Bible says he wept. He prayed. I wonder what he was saying. The Bible gives us a little and he says he repeated it again. Father, if it be thy will. Let me tell you, there are times that this journey to destiny is very hard. Someone who came to marry you and he's not serious with God. You would have said yes. You would have married a wrong person, but you would have been free. You said no 10 years ago until now, 10 years later. And people will see you and say, you are a stupid girl. You would have simply married that unbeliever. You stood expecting God to honor you. And it's 10 years now. What do you do when what people are saying about you is true? Though I walk through the valley, I feel. organize the crusade they told you there is witchcraft within that territory that if you organize that crusade it can cost you your life and you still went souls were saved and on your way returning there was an accident how do you explain that you stood on the crusade ground and you shouted and you told them Jesus heals let me tell you this when what you believe is not yet your reality here is what to do Stand, 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 stand. I'm prophesying, no, I'm not preaching. Some of you in the night while you are sleeping, you will hear the voice of this preacher again telling you, remember, God spoke through him, stand. You are about to compromise, stand. You are about to abort destiny. Whereas heaven is clapping for you for your stamina and your endurance. Stand. 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 Kali Katosiata. Stand. Politician, stand. Man of God, stand. Remember, nobody has risen as a revivalist, a revivalist in your village. Stand. You are the one God is counting on. It is painful, but stand. Stand. Let me sing one song for you and then we'll wrap up. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, lifter of men. I will hold on through the storm And I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal 
you're the lifter of men. The lifter of men. I know a man of God, very simple man of God. He's gone to be with the Lord now. Great healing man of God. Loved God with all his heart. And one day, they discovered that he had cancer. And initially, he shrugged it off and waved it off. The naysayers laughed and said, thank God. Ah, what happens when your naysayers find a reason to rejoice over you? Was it not the psalmist that said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? He says, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen, that man's health began to deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate. And I saw the way it shook the family. This, uh, this is a believing family that loved Jesus. And finally, he couldn't stand again and he had to go. Hmm. Please hear me. The Lord sent me to bring this message. These are not popular things, but let me submit to you by God. Becoming is very difficult. Becoming. Becoming an anointed man of God. One day God will give you an instruction to fast for one month, one year, one week. There are levels of consecration that will look as if God wants to kill you. This anointing you see is not just by laying on of hands. So believe me, you want to speak over people and swing open the gates of their destinies? <laughs> there are sacrifices. But those who become are those who must be willing to know that God is in this. And I will go all the way. I will go the way. All the way. All the way. There are missionaries who are in Nigeria today are in parts of Africa. They literally left their people. Left their comfort. Some of them resigned from jobs as successful people. And they answered the call. Abba, my people. Except you are motivated by something greater than the comfort of the now. You cannot make that sacrifice. Some of the men of God, you see that sometimes we abuse and insult. You don't know the things they left to serve the Lord. For many men of God, especially in Africa, it's not like they were total failures and they did not know what to do with their lives. Some of them were mandated by God to give up things. And they stood to bear the cross like fools. Some of them even unto death. Please sit down. Let's wrap up. Koinonia is quiet. But it is the truth. Let's wrap up. But the people that do know their God. This is the scripture we are discussing. We have looked at knowledge. The demands to have knowledge. The demands to be transformed. Now, watch this. This is the last step of the success equation. And very few people ever get to this third realm. Because the pain of overcoming the realm of being transformed, most people cannot endure to the end. A few walk their way through the finish line. But sadly, they just stop at the level of transformation. And that's why possibilities don't manifest in their lives. Do exploits. James chapter 1. Doing is the last step as far as destiny actualization is concerned. Action is demanded until and unless at some point in your life action is taken. You will never be able to see results. James 1, 22. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up so we can pray. It says, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Reading to 25, it says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. 
For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. He was. He says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, listen carefully, and continueth therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Let's finish the remaining. What will happen to that man? He said, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Action. Action. The word exploits. Now, I'm not talking about the verb. There is the verb exploit, right? Which means to selfishly take advantage of another for profit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the noun exploits and that means i wrote here notable outstanding or heroic accomplishments exploits notable comma outstanding or heroic accomplishments do not forget what we are looking at the road map to a triumphant destiny that's the topic we're dealing with tonight and well, considering for our text, Daniel 11 and 32, the B part, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. We're bringing out the revelation from the statement, know, be, and do. We said this represent the three, the tripartite junctions as far as the roadmap to an excelling life is concerned. Knowledge, number two, B, becoming, transformation. Now we're looking finally at doing. Write this down. Action requires courage. The first demand for doing is that you must be courageous. Action requires courage. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. Numbers 13, 30. Action requires courage. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. We heard the word. We understand what God has said. We've taken our time to understand the demands. He says, let us go up at once and possess it. It takes going up to possess. Not just talking about it. Not just meditating on it. Hearing the information and the instruction is wonderful meditating upon it until you believe is wonderful but if and when you are done with becoming the next thing is to go up at once and possess it for we are well able we are well able to overcome it deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4 this scripture has blessed me for many many years Pay attention as I read. Deuteronomy 21 to 4. We're wrapping up. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seeth horses, chariots, and a people more than thou, he says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up from out of the land of Egypt. Reading to 4. And it shall be when ye are come nigh to the battle, men of God, remember, you have a duty to approach and speak unto the people. Because battle is a moment of fierceness. There must be a system of encouragement. And it is given to the men and the women of God. The priests, you are the ones who will speak to the people. Verse 3. And ye shall say unto them, Hear, O koinonia, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save. My God will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and save you. Please hear me. 
if anyone tells you action does not require courage that person lied to you action requires courage you are touring virgin dimensions that you may never have gone there it takes courage number two action requires persistence and resilience do exploits those who do exploits are people who are persistent and resilient hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. hebrews 6 15 please and so after he had patiently endured the he being abraham he obtained the promise galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 galatians 6 and verse 9 it says and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not it takes persistence and it takes resilience the first time we had our crusade gauging by the standard today you would not call it a very successful meeting because when debt many things went you know with very few people i'm not sure we were up to 50 in that entire theater for the crusade after weeks of praying and preparing you would look and say this person is a failure these people are failures and the very next as we were returning god gave an instruction again to do another one god for you he will act as if he didn't see what happened to you are we together hmm. you gave somebody a lift he stole your phone by the next day god will say make sure you carry two people and bless them Action requires persistence and resilience. Number three, action requires conviction. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12 Action requires conviction. You will never be able to act until you are full of conviction. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Let me tell you the truth. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. You see why transformation is very important? Because as you begin to push against these walls by faith, it will take conviction. I submit to you by the God of heaven, even if I came to Abuja here and Koinonia started and I failed, I would not return back in shame. One thing for sure I would have done is I would have gone for a retreat to verify and re-verify again. God, is it my mind? Am I just acting in the flesh? Or is this true? Can I tell you, there are many things that are not working now in your life, but it does not mean that God is not there. All you need to do is to stay pushing with resilience. Resilience and persistence. Number four, action requires unbending focus. Action requires unbending focus. 313 Philippians. 313 action requires unbending focus brethren i count myself not myself to have apprehended but this one thing somebody say one thing one more time say one thing when you are focusing on 10 things you don't have focus it is usually one thing at a time there has to be something driving you this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me, I press. Proverbs 4.25. Unbending focus. Proverbs 4.25. Unbending focus. It says, let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. That means you can't run. How many of you have seen people who are running the finals of a 100 meter dash? And whether someone is insulting you or someone is clapping for you, you don't turn back. Your eyes is set on the finish line. Part of the training of a winner is that the moment you start looking, ah, you are clapping for me. When it has to do with the race of life, both commendation and criticism can distract. 
you need to remain focused on bending focus Luke chapter 9 and verse 62 action do exploits doing exploit requires unbending focus Jesus said unto them no man having put his hand on the or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom focus remember Lot's wife the Bible warns us about the wife of Lot she was already on her way out of Sodom and Gomorrah with the warning not to turn back it says and if any draw back Hebrews 10 I believe 38 or so and if any draws back my soul will have no pleasure in him hallelujah if any draws back my soul shall have no pleasure in him finally doing exploits requires patience Hebrews 6 12 patience Hebrews 6 12 and that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience that's what it takes to inherit the promises first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 we're wrapping up first Peter 5 and verse 10 but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus listen he says after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect entire now establish you strengthen you and then settle you after you have suffered a while and remain pushing praying pressing acting he says he will make you entire perfect establish you strengthen you settle you Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon 8 18 that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us action requires courage action doing exploits requires persistence and resilience in the face of negative situations discouraging situations action requires conviction action requires unbending focus and finally action requires patience now let's look at daniel eleven thirty-two 32 as we prepare to pray now you will understand this scripture but the people that do know they shall be and they shall do this is my message tonight the roadmap to a triumphant destiny to a triumphant life involves knowing becoming and doing in that order you can not do without becoming you can not become without knowing so let me read it this way for you to do exploits you need to be strong and for you to be strong you need to know in this case they are God if you ever see anybody doing exploits know that that person must have been strong he became to do and for that person to have become are we together that person must have submitted himself to knowledge a naive medical student goes to the university as a school living certificate holder with the potential of becoming a doctor what happens knowledge knowledge they keep pumping knowledge for over six seven years and the medical doctor is evolving out of the ordinary person there is a becoming happening and do you know within the limit of his practice he will not be allowed to do certain things because he's still becoming sooner or later he gets accustomed to the medical practice and then by the time he's done he's now given liberty to start doing and then the process reverses uh, the process continues again even though he is a graduate he's not called a consultant is that correct knowledge starts again another version of becoming happens and then he can do exploits greater knowledge greater becoming greater exploits small knowledge small becoming small exploits high level knowledge high level transformation high level exploits the choice is yours 
I said before you life and death. I said before you a mediocre destiny and a life of kingdom exploits that brings great glory to God and dignity to you and posterity judging you faithful by reason of your finishing strong. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I remind you again as I started that in destiny, you must know how to fight. You must know how to finish. You must know how to keep. Please rise up on your feet. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You're the lifter of men. The lifter. If you can, for one minute, may I request that you hold the hand of someone just close to you. We're about to pray. Please, let's minimize movement. There, let me just make a very important announcement. Please, as much as possible, avoid walking out before the service is over. It's spiritual indiscipline. If you have stayed for no matter how long, the extra five minutes you spend will not change anything, not your going home, not whatever. It's in discipline. Are we together? In many assemblies, they close the door, they do whatever. We don't have to do that. Please. There is nothing that is such an emergency. You're rushing to get a car. You're rushing to do this. One prophetic word in closing the service may be your word. God can reserve your word to the end. I notice that every time we make altar calls, you see, once we're done, many people are, it's an attitude of a baby Christian. And for some of you who do that, some of you are pastors, you are leaders, avoid that. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us close with decency and then you leave. It does not take more than a minute to do an altar call, more than a minute or two to say a prayer. I just needed to say this. Don't do it in Koinonia. Don't do it anywhere except for very specific reasons maybe you're a guest minister and you need to leave or some kind of thing there is a system that allows you but ordinarily don't do that this is part of the kingdom culture that we must learn hallelujah for some of you you can be living whereas the people god brought you to church to meet after church are there but because you are rushing you are rushing into nowhere it shouldn't be so please I love you and that's why I want you to receive. It's a culture that you should not practice. It is very, very wrong. Whether you are outside, you are inside, discipline yourself as much as possible. If you have endured through two, three, four hours, five more minutes, I'm not sure. If it's an emergency, that's fine. But aside that, please discipline yourself. So stay and join the prayer and let us pray. I owe a responsibility to teach you the culture of the kingdom. And in this house, we're a house of order, and we're house of honor. So even when you invite people to come, please let them learn. We don't believe in policing people and using force, but revelation should upgrade you to a realm of maturity. Are we together? So we'll pray just two prayer points tonight. Number one, you're going to cry to God and say, Father, I obtain grace to contend for knowledge and the transformation that comes with that knowledge and then the grace to act. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying from the depth of your heart. Shalika paroska dibaleyasa. Lift your voice to Jesus. Thank you, Father. The people that do know, I obtain grace to know. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, I receive the meekness that helps me to know. I obtain grace to ask questions that help me to know. I obtain grace to be willing to sacrifice my time, my energy, my resources to buy the truth so that I will know. I obtain grace to place value on knowledge and to retain superior knowledge. Now pray on becoming. I contend for the grace to become before doing. I recognize that this is not the best version of me. 
I lay aside my current failures, my current successes, and I press in the name of Jesus, becoming a greater spiritual version, a greater financial version, a greater intellectual version. I upgrade my references, kingdom worthy models and references that guide and challenge my transformation. In the name of Jesus, I give up age-long limiting unscriptural anti-destiny beliefs and I embrace superior beliefs. In the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to face and endure the consequences that come with growth, that come with transformation. Now pray for exploits. I receive grace to be courageous. Courageous. Even when it does not look like it. To hold on to the word of God and to believe. I receive grace to be persistent and resilient. I receive grace to be a person, a man of God, a businessman, a family man, a politician with convictions. Convictions that provide the energy, the drive to take action. I receive grace to be of unbending focus. Unbending focus. And in the name of Jesus, I receive the patience, the staying power to remain until the word of God manifests in my life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Last prayer point. I want you to declare that your prophetic destiny, the place that has been earmarked for your prophetic destiny, if it requires a fight, declare that you are a victor in Christ. If it is a race, require, declare that you run with the speed. He says, he says, he makes my feet like hinds feet, that you run and redeem time. And your bishopric that you will keep it and none will take. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, the grace to fight a good fight of faith. The grace to run with the speed of, of, of a gazelle. The speed of, of, of a, the fastest animal. To run with it in the name of Jesus. And with the strength of an ox. The grace to keep the faith. To keep the call, to remain, to stay, to be strong till the end. For in Jesus' name I pray. You see, but the things of the Spirit are very stupid things. They don't make sense. We're going to shout it one more time. Just that shout is my turn. It's a release of faith. And that's it. God is literally changing someone's life. Ready for that now? If this is your night, I want you to shout it with faith. It's my turn. supply all my needs according to his riches in glory he will put his angels charge over me Jehovah direct cares for me Jehovah direct cares for me I trade these ashes in for beauty And wear forgiveness like a crown Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down At the foot of 
great things I should say for you. And where forgiveness like a cloud Coming to his stuff is a mercy I let everyone now One more time, sing it from your heart I pray these ashes in for you Father, you have dedicated tonight to be an extraordinary night. And we say amen to it. We decree and declare, may your hands be so stretched, O God. Your people have come. They have come believing. They have come because they heard that you are alive in our midst in this place. Many have traveled from far and near. Many are connecting from all over the world. I pray, O oh God, that you will reveal yourself tonight as the God that doeth wonders. Give us testimonies, strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Just help those under the anointing. We really want to celebrate the media department. Praise the Lord. The number one challenge of many people as far as our messages are concerned is having a system that will be able to grant them the ease of access. I, I acknowledge the fact that it's been very difficult, especially for people outside of this nation, having to use for share for many years. And um, what's the other one? The Google Drive and all of that. We again want to thank all of the people who have been part of this family, um, allowing our messages to be available across various um, blog pages, um, download uh, sites, and so on and so forth and getting it across to people and I believe that this will really bring a lot of ease um, koinoniadownloads.org is the um, site for it and we are really really very happy just a few things um, I apologize I would have called the head of department to just say a word or two but we don't have that time now um, I understand that the page has um, links to know a bit about the ministry and then the downloads and then from there you can access Koinonia Radio uh, and then you can also give. I think it's secured enough for you to be able to give the information um, of the ministry's account and then if you want to do any payment online um, it's secured. We have tried to make sure that it's secured and then you can also register your testimonies there. There's a column for your testimony and then our official lines for contact is also there. Um, I'm also told that the downloads contain all our messages to date and will be updated every week. And it's been arranged according to date, according to category, according to alphabetical order, and then the miracle services. So everything has been done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are not happy about this, leave this place this night because we are, we are people who rejoice. Hallelujah. Why are we dedicating this? The same reason why we dedicated the baby. Dedication is not for, dedication is for anything that came by God. Anything. We are handing it over to God like we handed over everything and said, Lord, it's yours. Give it wings. Let it bless people. And it's also a way to help us manage some of these very ungodly 
these scammers that continue to go around parading as Joshua Selman, parading as as um, you see, if you claim you are me, what fights me will also look for you. This is this is what people don't know. There are there are all kinds of revelations. When God calls a man, he knows what fights that man and he puts a grace. It's like a vaccination. So when you claim you are me, I don't mean like in this in the spirit, in the physical to deceive people. You are announcing the realm of the spirit that whether they see me or see that person, any one of them. You see that? It's the same mystery in marriage. And so some of these foolish people don't know what they are doing to themselves. You bring attacks upon you, maybe your wife, your children, just because of falsehood. Let me say it again and again, please, especially for our international community. Do not, please, do not entertain anybody whatsoever, whether as Joshua Selman or anybody connected to this ministry, asking you to transfer money through any charity account. There is only one account in the name of the ministry and in my name for any personal seat that has been made available, ministerially speaking. So any charity name or whatever it is for prayer and so on and so forth, please and please, I want you to know that you are dealing with a scammer. Praise the Lord. And we have asked the Lord to help us fight them. And I'm telling you, God answers prayers here. Praise the Lord. So Father, stretch your hands please and let's pray. We thank you. You have done this for your glory. You have done this to bring honor to the name of Jesus. You have done this to lift up your name. And Father, we sincerely, sincerely thank you. You are God. You are King. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you have given us to make the message um, structurally available to bless all and sundry. We declare that it will remain a blessing. Let this download portal remain a blessing in the name of Jesus. Let millions around the world access it and get the resources that will provide supernatural solutions for them. Let people be saved through this portal. Let people be healed through this portal. Let people be changed, transformed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we bless you and we honor you. Therefore, we dedicate this and we release it tonight. Let it bless everyone. Let it be our contribution to kingdom come. Let it be our contribution um, towards establishing the purposes of the kingdom as committed unto us. Therefore, Father, with all humility and gratitude, we dedicate this in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. So please, make it known, let the whole world know that um, this is available as we improve on it. We'll continue to let you know um, the improvements that are there. Are you ready for tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Pray one prayer. Lord, that which belongs to me must enter my hands tonight. Lift your voice and pray. The grace belonging to me, the dimension, the anointing, everything that belongs to me. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy. Holy, 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 hol
Almighty is the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Say, holy, 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 is the Lord, is the Lord, Hallelujah. Acts chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 5. Let your heart be open tonight. Acts chapter 5. From verse 12. We'll read from verse 12 to 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. 14. And believers were the more added unto the Lord by reason of the mighty things that happened. Multitudes, both of men and women 15 in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of peter passing might overshadow some of them the last verse 16 there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, everyone. Praise the Lord. It is God's desire that continually a territory and a people continually, that they continue to experience the wonder-working power that is back of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is powerful. The Bible says God has given him a name. Please listen. And he said that name has been exalted above every other name. And the Bible demands, not as an option, that that name sustains the ability to cause every knee to bow and every tongue to confess acknowledging that Jesus has now become not only Christ alone but Lord the Bible says he has been made both Lord and Christ he became Christ when the Holy Spirit came upon him he became Lord at his coronation when he sat at the right hand of the Father so he occupies those offices as the Christ of God and Lord the owner of the earth One of the ways that the kingdom was designed to advance, please listen, is through the, the wonder-walking manifestations of the power and the glory of God through men to men within a territory. That means that when a territory continues to experience the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ in miracles, signs, wonders, healings, strange manifestations of his power. The Bible says that everywhere this kind happens, an entire territory will always come towards where the hand of God is finding expression. And that many multitudes, both of men and women, will come to Jesus. 
I came in and I met a gentleman sharing his testimony. I was so blessed when he said in the dream, remember, that the demand. And now he's waiting for the altar call. That one is the power of God. Are we together? Ministry is easy when there is results. You see, let me tell you, anything is hard when there are no results. So, we are a people of results, consistent results. Anything will be difficult when there are no results. Tonight, several people have come, several others connecting from around the world. Why? Number one, because we all together as a family love Jesus. But number two, because we have come believing. Believing, number one, according to Hebrews 11 verse 6, that He is. He exists. And then two, that He has the ability to reward. God is called a rewarder. He can reward them that diligently seek Him. There are families represented here, trusting God for all kinds of things, holding in their hands death sentences. Situations that only the power of God can solve. What then is ministry if it cannot culminate to the lifting of men? What then is ministry if it cannot draw men to Jesus? What then is ministry if it does not provide a platform for people to experience a dimension of God that is higher than science? A dimension of God that is higher than medicine. A dimension of God that is higher than economics. See, listen, let me tell you this. When you come before God, it is important that you respectfully acknowledge that men have understanding. But when you come before the God of the universe, please find a way of indoctrinating yourself that you are operating um, you are dealing with a God that operates in a realm and a dimension that is higher than the scope of men. He will use men, but he does not walk by men. He walks through men. So it is not unusual that you are here right now, and scientifically speaking, there is you put two and two together and it does not make sense how you will come out. When I was meditating on what I'll be sharing, just a little chat before we pray, I, I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw what would be a similitude of the experience of Jesus. Remember when he was going to Gadara and there was a storm. And I saw not the exact thing in the Bible, but I saw like a raging storm. And I knew that this would probably refer to a category of people seated here and outside and following online who are having all kinds of storms around their lives. It may be to go back to that scripture and just study it very carefully. <clears throat> because if Jesus calmed the storm, then you should study what he did. Are we together? Can we look at it for just two minutes before we pray? Luke chapter 8. Let's look at Luke's account. I love the scriptures. Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day, listen, that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Uh huh. Let's continue. But as they sailed, Remember, it was vision that brought this trouble. If they were not moving forward, there would be no need for a storm. Sometimes, a storm does not mean you are wrong. It could mean you are right. They were on their way to the other side. Sometimes, not having a storm does not mean you are alright. There are times that it means you are not doing anything. You are not moving. They were on their way to the other side. And then the Bible says that a storm arose. But as they sailed, he, Jesus now, fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy. 24. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master. Another version says, Carest not that we perish. 
And he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased and there was calm. Leave it there. Leave that scripture there. <laughs> Look up. A storm is made of two things. Number one, wind. Number two, water. Every storm is made of wind and water. The Bible says to calm the storm, Jesus dealt with two things. He dealt with the wind and he dealt with the water. That a storm does not just happen until these elements are present. The wind and the water. The wind in scripture always talks about the spiritual input. The realm of the spirit. All through consistent from Genesis 1. Breathing upon them the breath of God. Ezekiel 37. Are we together? Right everywhere the Bible talks about wind. It has to do with the spiritual dimension of anything. And then number two, the Bible talks of water. Water in scripture, especially with this kind of reference, refers to men, multitudes. The voice of God is mighty upon the waters. So the Bible says, you have no business having a storm until there is wind and water. There has to be a spiritual dimension for every storm to be called a storm. And then there must be human factors that can work in partnership with the realm of the spirit to make a storm real. So Jesus is on his way going. We see that there are spirits. We know that this is true because as soon as he gets to Gadara, we see a man and we see spirits. So this condition was fulfilled. Are we together now? That a storm cannot be a storm until there is wind and water. Jesus gets up and with this intelligence, he knows what to rebuke. The Bible says, look at, the Bible says he rebuked the wind, one side, and then the raging of the water. Was it not the man in Gadara who was raging with anger? Are we together now? The Bible says they would bind that man and put him in grave, um, I mean, at rocks and he would break the chains. He came to Jesus and said, what is all this? You have come to destroy us. Do not torment us. And Jesus rebukes the spirit. Jesus corrects that man. And when you read down here, the Bible says he came and met the man in his right mind. In his right senses. So that means that every time humans go through storms, it's a combination of two things. One, the physical body, the situation that looks obvious. But that in the realm of the spirit, there is a wind that gives that water life. That the water does not move on its own. It is sponsored by an agency. That the family problem is more than just two people. Are we together now? That the financial storm is not just about money, Naira and Kobo. Every storm is made of wind and water. Jesus did not only rebuke the wind. The Bible says he rebuked the raging of the water. And the Bible said they, like two living things, ceased. And there was calm. Jesus is teaching us how to calm storms. That every time there is a storm, number one, know that it only comes because you are moving forward. Let us go to the other side. You know, we have this mindset that every time storms come, sometimes they mean you are wrong. It may mean you are right. Jesus never said, let us go back. He did something about that situation. There are times that going back is not an option. You have the power to calm the storm. And that the first thing he did, just to encourage someone, that the first thing Jesus did was to rebuke the wind in that order. Because according to James 2 and verse 26, a spirit without a body is dead. Behind every body there is a spirit component to it. Behind every situation as a body there is a spirit component to it. So he rebukes the spirit. This is the same thing Jesus did also. When you read the 12th chapter of Luke, the Bible lets us know that one time um, he met a woman who had been stooped for 18 years, he said. And he said, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. And then when the woman was loosed, he now laid hands on her and straightened her. 
and said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, ought not this woman, she shouldn't be in this condition as a daughter of Abraham. There are storms that continue to rage. When God showed me that vision, I knew exactly what he was saying. There are many people who will focus on what is obvious. The financial issue, the marital issue, the career issue. You are just looking at the water, the raging of the water, but that the water in itself has a wind behind it. There is a spirit that is sponsoring that family catastrophe. There is a spirit. Listen very carefully. This our generation that continues to ignore the reality of the spirit realm. It's amazing. How we try to ignore, we find a way of convincing ourselves that there are no spirit influences in the world of men. And if any, it's just mind. No, there are real spirits. They are alive. They influence people's finances. They influence marriages. They influence ministries. They influence results. Every time Jesus was going to handle issues, he dealt with the spiritual dimension first. And then he corrected the physical dimension. Are we together? That means adjusting things from the physical is a total waste of time. There are people who the solution to their problem is not counseling. The guy is not a thief as a habit. He's a thief as an influence. That's the reason why no matter where you hide what you hide, the spirit works like a prophetic spirit with word of knowledge. He will know where it was kept. That's not a habit. There are people like Jonah who are carrying all kinds of presents that continue to program difficulties in their lives. Even something that should be easy, when it gets to your turn, it becomes horribly difficult. It's a spirit. When there is a raging storm, that the way to deal with it is to rebuke the wind, then rebuke the water, then both of them will be calm. You rebuke your child and you leave the wind, you are in trouble. Imagine that Jesus met the guy at Gadara and said, that's alright, no problem, just dress well and uh, behave yourself next time when you see me. No. Legion. Legion of devils in one man. And Jesus said, go out of this man now. And they left. And then the man, imagine the man taking his bath, a sound and a sane man coming back and you look at him and say, ah, yesterday you were, you were not like this. And the man will say, yes, because it was me plus other entities. See, I have learned by experience and by scripture the, the power of victory when realities in the realm of the spirit are settled. It's a total waste of time, I am telling you, to approach things purely from a scientific point or from a sociological point. At best, it can just provide temporary succor. But if it's results you are looking for, all realities must first be settled in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 starting says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It calls faith the evidence of things not seen. And then it says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, the second part is my interest. It says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means the physical realm does not give birth to the physical realm. The physical realm is a child that comes from another dimension. Every good thing has an origin from the realm of the spirit. Every evil thing also has an origin from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? When a woman gives birth to a child, sorry to use this analogy, the child comes out and you notice there is an umbilical cord 
that connects into the woman. That umbilical cord is a testimony that that child started from within. Is that true? This is the same thing. Listen carefully. Every situation you see is like a baby. When you trace carefully, you will trace the umbilical cord and it will disappear. You will have to be spiritual to know where it extends to. And some spiritual umbilical cords are long because they come from regions that are very far. Hallelujah. But what does the doctor do to have the child completely free? He cuts it off. Period. For as long as that umbilical cord is there, that connection remains. And then he cuts it off. This is exactly how it is. Stop approaching life just from the physical standpoint. I am telling you this. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. I have read my Bible and I have learned every flourishing ministry does not start just by an anointed man and chairs and members and keyboardists and intelligent speaking no sir it starts from the realm of the spirit there must be a testimony in the realm of the spirit that reflects in the physical the book of job how did it start the bible says once upon a time the writer of Job gave us the duality of realms. We were able to see things from both realms. And the Bible says the whole story did not start just on earth. That the discussion started in the realm of the spirit, in the heavenlies. And a man came and was proposing all kinds of things. Satan, going to and fro. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan testified and said, well, I came to him and I found him fortified. And he said, is it for nothing that you cover this man? While that is happening in the realm of the spirit, Job gets up in the morning and he does not know that he's one week left for his tragedy to start. He's on earth. Hmm. Imagine the night before all his children will die and all his cattle. He was still the greatest man in the east. But overnight, when the realm of the spirit finishes something, it will take only God to correct it. Whatever happens in the physical realm is just acting. Believe me. The same way from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was already slain. And so it will be impossible for it not to happen in the physical realm. Regardless of what Satan did, all the manipulations. Are we together? The Bible says that God has blessed us already with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's already done. That means the, the reality that these things have been established in the realm of the spirit should give us confidence. That for as long as we partner with God, inevitably, it must find expression in the physical realm. This I believe. Build the ministry from the realm of the spirit and watch what happens in the physical realm. Build the business from the realm of the spirit and what, what happens in the physical realm. Build the children from the realm of the spirit. The dedication I did for our little one here, that's what they did for many people. They dedicated them to idols and immediately the next week they went to America and never came to Nigeria again. Yet their lives continue to parallel somebody in the village, although they are in America. Why? Because there was an authorization that the realm of the spirit will, should feel free to continue to create scenarios that draw people back. We are thriving and excelling because what you see is only a reflection. It has been finished already. The miracle service has been finished already in the realm of the spirit. The rejoicing version of you is already a reality in the realm of the spirit. Are you seeing that now? And that's why for as long as your heart is open and your faith can connect inevitably, you will see the hand of God. He said, who has believed our report to him, that man, the arm of the Lord has been made manifest. Why do we call for these kinds of services? They are not just moments to while away time. There are several people outside everywhere, thousands of people all around this ground, and many more connecting around the world. God is not stupid to gather a people. Some of you left this journey from 
maybe outside of this nation, within this nation, traveling, risking your life to come and sit down. Would God be joking with you to bring you here? Abba. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power. I believe that God can turn things around. Listen to me, please. I want to shake up unbelief from you. I believe that God, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that a whole family can come and just sit in and say, Lord, can you turn our lives? Ha! Do you know, as a man of God, I've been around this thing for a while, and maybe a little while, and I'm telling you, myself, even as a man who God has helped, sometimes I am in awe and shock at the way God moves. That someone can just come and sit in the presence of God, my brothers and sisters, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes like a drug, and that's it. You step up, and doors open, just like that. It's like a dream. Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. Please hear me. Believe what I tell you. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. If it has not gotten to you, something stopped it. I desired once and again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. The breakthrough, the lifting, the anointing, the new levels, the increase, the expansion. It is God's will. His testament already tells us. There's no need going to prayer and say, is it God's will? No. The will of God is revealed through his word. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. And then scripture says, let God be true and that every man a liar. If you believe this about God, then you will also know that the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal. What does temporal mean? Subject to change. Shading. But the things that are unseen are eternal. That means everything that does not represent the counsel of God can change can change. It's a miracle that my life of lack can change. Are we together now? My life of living from drug to drug, from death sentence to death sentence can change. So the question tonight is not can God do it? No, no, no. The ministry of Jesus captured all of this. He preached. He taught. He healed the sick. Listen carefully. He casted out devils. He made for the provisions of people that there be supplies. So I know God is able to do it. Please don't come sitting here tonight wondering. I've gone to many churches, you may say. I've been prayed for by several people. Apostle, you don't know the amount of vigils. Let me tell you something. And I submit to you respectfully. Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. Listen very carefully. Don't generalize troubles. Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. The anointing is like money. If you have 1,000, you have money. But that money can only buy to the limit of 1,000. And if what you need to buy is 10,000, you are in trouble. You will need to add 9 of what you already have. In addition to what you have. To make that a possibility. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. My assignment is to continue to grow in the anointing. And to continue to grow in the revelation of the truth. Why? Because it is in that growth that more people's testimony is resident. That means the testimony that the level of grace I occupied three, four, five years could not produce. If it cannot produce that result till now, then I'm not growing. 
the problem is never with those who are having the challenge you see i continue to say this the problem is not with members it's not with the sick people no the problem is the limitation of the grace that is upon the person who is dispensing the word it is true why do you call one doctor consultant and then you call another um, a resident doctor what is the difference they are all doctors is that true are they all doctors i believe in the power of god i truly believe in miracles i believe in miracles number one because the bible allows it number two because this is how men know that jesus is lord listen to me the demonstration of the power of god in miracles signs and wonders no matter who argues around it is the authorized signature sign el shaddai this is how he works when he moves upon the lives of people he leaves his signature there where the carcasses are they say that's where the eagles will gather please let me encourage you if you are a man of god here and you are here in this meeting please desire more than receiving a miracle desire a solid impartation of a real grace that is provable 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 no amount of poster would do the work of a real miracle no amount of handbill now i'm not being sarcastic will do the work of a real miracle a transformed life is a real miracle a healed body is a real miracle hallelujah we have come here tonight to celebrate the hand of god resting upon people resting upon families some of you are here for the first time because through the messages and through testimonies you have heard that this is what god is doing now you are seated like somebody who is ready to watch a movie and you are wondering okay is my case too big will god be able to visit me You know, reminds me of how patients talk to doctors. They believe that the doctor has never seen their father. Say, doctor, you don't know the pain, eh? When I'm telling the doctor, I already know the situation. Don't just be patient. Say, don't allow me. Let me let me explain to you. Let me even try to turn and it's looking. And the man says, I was in medicine before you were born. I've met this kind of thing before. I know the solution. And sometimes the solution is funny. He can just give him a prescription. And he said, that's all. I thought I would be on admission. I said, no, no, it doesn't call for that kind of emergency. Just because you are threatened by the situation does not mean the situation is a threat. No. no. Apostle, you don't know the kind of financial trouble that is on my head that brought me here. No. It's a threat to you, but it's not a threat. Find a way of believing what I'm saying. Because it is true. The Son of Righteousness is here With healing in His wings yeah. The Son of Righteousness is here With lifting in His wings yeah. The Son of Righteousness is here Speeding His wings For someone's destiny The Son of Righteousness is here With fire in His wings The Son Righteousness is here with healing in his wings. Listen, when the Lord called me, I told him something. I said, Lord, I know how unfair it is to gather a people and not have the power to allow your might to be revealed in them. You know, most times there are people who just act as if 
once the people hear the revelation of the word is all right uh, if they are not changed that's okay no i believe in miracles i believe in the word becoming flesh god reaching down to people i believe in situations changing with proofs proofs your account proof your destiny proof everything with proof and we will continue to thrive and push through and see to it that by the grace of god almighty that we grow to realms in the spirit where every challenge that comes is within the jurisdiction of the grace provided to provide answers that's what god does you come and sit down in this atmosphere ladies and gentlemen and you are wondering can god step into my situation i love jesus with all my heart i have read the scripture i have seen what god can do can god give me a job can god open a door can god put this anointing upon my life can god lift the death sentence over my life can god bring to end this age-long captivity that has tied the family the answer is yes let me repeat the answer is yes god is able before god gathers a people like this he will check first whether he has the power to do it it is based on that conclusion that he gathers a people he will call a solemn assembly and say come and experience god hallelujah praise the lord so tonight i like your faith to be fired up don't don't allow the devil to reduce you to the realm of the flesh where you are wondering how can god make a way in the wilderness there are many ways god can deliver you from the wilderness he can leave the wilderness there and carry you that's method one number two he can scatter every rock in the wilderness and make a road out of it three he can leave you there and carry the wilderness it doesn't matter how he does it the most important thing is you are separated from it look at the size of your challenge the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool footstool hallelujah his footstool please help those here the power of god i just saw light just flashing here two people just here the power of god is touching them the lord straight up is visiting them and for one i'm seeing god remove something that looks like a growth around the stomach i command that growth to go now in the name of jesus there are two of them there's two i saw two lights so just this way and it's the ministry of the spirit you see two lights there is there is one something is coming out of the stomach is what i'm seeing um i don't know what it is looking like but it's looking like a thread just coming out of the stomach lord we believe in you lord we believe in you there is a man of god here the power of god is coming on him you are in ministry you are a man of god I just saw it by the spirit. Let me tell you why these things happen. Look up please. Let me teach you something. Don't worry about the time. I just want to show you something in 2 minutes. I just fell to digress. You see all you see is not all there is. When God calls a man there is not only an anointing there is an office and there is a throne that defends what he represents there are certain operations of the spirit that are not only products of the anointing no there are certain operations that are legislations it is not the anointing that makes it happen there is an office in the realm of the spirit recognized accredited by god allocated for that grace and that office please listen understand what i'm teaching you so that when words come like this i'm not trying to transfer the anointing to the person to make it happen no 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 there are times that that happens try to understand what i'm teaching you 
there are things that are they are governmental legislations you see let me tell you there is growth in the spirit and people can grow to realms where certain privileges are given to them what was the privilege of the man with the parable of the five two and one talent he said i set thee over kingdoms what kingdoms that was the reward he got a ranking in the spirit that means i extend your dominion that these other kingdoms they also come under the influence of your speaking that means you can declare things when i started out in ministry i would not minister that way because it was not by this this grace for legislature it was just about the anointing being properly channeled but now that's not just the issue now no at that level you will not be able to minister to a crowd like this you see that so when i declare and i speak sometimes it is not just an anointed man speaking no there are speakings that come from the anointing but there are speakings that come by reason of the office that speaks the centurion said i am a man under authority authority there is a government there i am a captain i have an allocation in the army there are people who must hear me because i am under that grace that means there are things that can be called listen if i am walking if i am walking in a restaurant and i am the manager in that restaurant now whether i can cook or not i am the manager do you understand what i'm saying and that means there are certain privileges that can happen is that true it is within my power to tell you come and sit down in that restaurant please serve him you see that i cannot cook physically but i occupy a position that has a cook under me i can make his grace work for you this is what i'm saying i'm not the one who prepared the food but there is somebody who can cook but both the cook and all of this is within the restaurant was given to my care let me tell you what this means please listen and, and i'm careful to say this because many young people once they get these kinds of things they usually will not understand what the man of god is saying and they will go online and start writing things that are er erroneous let me tell you this there is an office you can occupy that the grace must not be on you to reach people that means if pastor femi has a grace for prayer and you need it I can grow to a point in the spirit whereby the power of submission, I, me, a man, I can take the grace on him for prayer because it is needed and it is part of the apostolic duty to see that this guy's prayer life is on. I can partner with the Holy Spirit and take the grace for prayer that is on him. I may not have it as a person, but because he needs that grace, God can use me to take that grace and place it on someone. It's true. We remain humble before God and we thank Him for the things that He continues to provide. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men are not just men. This is a revelation that is very, is very difficult to understand, but it's powerful when understood. So when God gathers us like this, God will not bring you to a place that cannot bless you. No, God does not work like that. He will first check your problem before directing you. So if he allowed you to come, it is because he has checked. It's like a checklist. And he said, no, 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 the grace for your problem is here. Go, you can go. The same way you apply for admission, you first check whether the course you want, do they offer it? Just because they don't offer your course does not mean they are not a university. There are times that only one university is offering a particular course and you will travel and go down there. Why? Because you want to access it. This is how these things are spiritually too sometimes. 
Doesn't mean that we are the only ones doing what we are doing. That would be pride and that would be untrue. But let me tell you something. That as God continues to engrace us, then he provides a platform and an opportunity for the anointing to step. I know that not many of us are still crippled and all of that. So it's difficult because you may not see visible signs immediately. But the anointing comes on you and then you can go. As you go, you, you know what is on you by what starts to change. So you are a man of God. You go back. Ah, I came to Zaria. It was a powerful meeting. And then God leads you to certain people. And for the first time you are surprised. You are talking to the person and you are hearing names that you don't know. You are saying, okay, I used to just think these things are intuition. So the speakings of God can be this clear. I can know it this much. Tonight is not only a night of deliverance. Tonight is not only a night of healing. Tonight is not only a night to calm storms. Tonight is a night of receiving. I really believe that impartations to receive, to receive. You have to add to the grace that is upon your life already. Grace and peace be multiplied. If you stay where you are, you will not grow in results. Grace and peace be multiplied. You are a prayer warrior, you are, the, you are a leader in a group. You remain at that level, everybody will go and leave you there. And they will not listen to you again. That's the truth because they have exhausted the level of grace. It's not that they don't want to love you. You have to grow. So take away your mind from anything that can distract and focus on God. Place something upon my life. Lord, you have come, put something upon my life. Put something upon my destiny. And if you came here as a family, put something, oh God, upon our family. Son of righteousness is he with fire in his eyes. The Son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Hallelujah. Who is Deborah? Overflow one. Just we're going to be very fast tonight. Deborah. Someone in overflow one. Deborah. We're going to pray. Deborah. She's at the back. You are wearing something on your head. You are tying something on your head. Outside. Overflow one. Son of righteousness is here, healing in his wings. Son of righteousness is I'm going to pray, but the person I'm seeing is wearing traditionals. It's like it has a little of maroon touch on it. Traditionals. This is what I'm seeing. I will pray for you. The Son of Righteousness is here. When you find such, if there's, if there's nobody like that, no problem. My dear, where are you coming from? Zaria, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Your life will so change this night. It will surprise you. There is a God in heaven. I'm seeing you crying. And the Lord is wiping your tears completely. Just by His Spirit. He's wiping. Where are you from? The mic is not working. Find out why. Please. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you, my dear. Deborah is your name. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I release you from captivity. I set you free by the Spirit of the Living God. I'm seeing something that has tied you huh? from head to toe. But the Lord is saying to release you. And I declare to you by the Spirit of the Living God that God now is releasing you completely by the Spirit of the Living God. Releasing you right now. My dear. Where are you coming from? Outside? Your name is Deborah. 
Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. Who is that? Her name is Deborah. Where was she? Outside? What's wrong with her? Huh? Why? How long, madam? Madam, you feel pain in your back? Severe pain? Yes, sir. Where? Here. Yeah. Mm. We are going to pray for the sick. Huh? So when we pray for the sick, you will come out and I will pray for you. Okay? You came with her? You are her daughter? Who are you? Just a friend that came. You are a nice lady. Come. What, do you, what are you trusting God for? Huh? A life partner. I love you. You are a very honest and sincere lady. And I'm going to pray for you. Huh? Hold my hands. Father, honor your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Give this lady a very godly man by the spirit of the living God. Find somewhere for her. Let her sit down. We are going to pray. I want to pray. We are going to do a very quick walk tonight. The power of God is coming on someone around the worship team here. I just saw just like light. I don't know who that person is, but I just saw light around the worship team. We are going to pray. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry, Lord, visit me. Please pray quickly. Lift your voice and pray. Make sure you pray. Something must come upon your life tonight. coming from come this lady you yes where are you coming from you are schooling here from where your state you are from Kaduna state where are your loved ones tell them the month of November is a month of breakthrough for your family huh that's what God is telling me to tell you November is a very strange month of breakthrough. Huh? Your dad. That's what I'm saying. Something would have happened to someone this November, but the Lord is saying November is a month of breakthrough for your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I prophesy to you, let it come to an end now. The spirit that kills people by November it comes to an end now i command by the spirit of the living god the bible says now the lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty let it end let it be over right now let it be over right now Father, I pray tonight in the name that is above all names, that your mighty power, in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God, that it be made manifest across this place. Let yokes be lifted, let burdens be lifted, let all kinds of yokes be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen please, I want to pray for you. Please pay attention, focus on Jesus. It is not just a call to have people fall under the anointing. No. I want to pray and minister the power of God. That if there is anything at all within this circumference that is not of the Christ. 
that as we pray, the power of God comes upon you. Please, we'll, have, we'll make it very fast and the ushers will bring them out. We are going to shout that name that is above all names. It's not a ritual. Wherefore, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will honor your word and honor your name. At the count of three, together as a family of faith, we are going to shout that name. Already I'm telling you, I see fire just like rain. But it's the rain of fire coming on people to end all kinds of oppressions. At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. That every power that is not of God, go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare the forces of ancestry, yokes of darkness. Please bring them out quickly, quickly, quickly. We are praying again. Hear me. The Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. You are going to shout that name again. Not just for yourself. Not just for your family. That everything that is not by the Christ, it must give way right now. I speak to principalities and powers and thrones and dominions. And every name that is named. Are you ready to shout now? At the count of three, one. Two, three, shout Jesus. Release them now. Release them now. 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 Release their destinies. By the blood, release them now. The Bible says, even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered hallelujah was you praying you're going to shout two more times this is the second to the last time the lord wants to end patterns something that happened to someone your mother is now happening to you your mother was raped you are now being raped your father failed you now failed in the name of Jesus, I declare. Now, this one, I see fire coming on several people. Inside and outside. Lord, I pray, anyone here who is a victim of patterns, strengthened by spirit, at this shout, oh God, let there be deliverance. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. Reputable patterns that tie people down outside, inside, be free now. Everyone who is under the influence of any strange spirit, whether here or any of the overflows, I declare to those spirits. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I speak by the anointing, in the name of Jesus, that these spirits let them go and release the families. All those in front here, at the count of three, release them, release their families. One, two, three, go now, go, 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 go. The woman holding photo. There's a woman here holding a picture. There's a woman holding a picture. Come, madam. Let every other name fade away. Come, madam. 
that have the other name till there's only you Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Madam, where are you coming from, ma? From Port Harcourt. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a stronghold of witchcraft across your family. But the Lord is saying, these are your children. Where are they? Your children. I'm seeing two of your children in the U.S. Is the mic working? It's not working. Is it working? Please help us. Let there be someone who is... Huh? I'm seeing two of your children in U.S. How many of them are in U.S.? Okay, three of them in U.S. Who is in U.K.? Where is the one in U.K.? There's one in U.K. Listen to me, madam. God is going to come upon your family and bring rest. Roundabout. Rest. Roundabout. In the name of Jesus, madam, I lay my hands on you and upon this request. Turn every captivity, my God, to become like the streams of Negev, the Negev. Be free now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Over now. The power of God will touch them in the U.S., in the U.K. I bring liberty to this family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um... My friend, this man, please just clear the way for me. The man with gray hair just near this one. Come, sir. Let every other name fade away. Where are you coming from, sir? Niger State. From Niger State. Are you a man of God? What do you do? Pastor. You are a pastor. Where? I have a ministry. Point of joy ministry. You have a ministry. I have to pray for you. I'm seeing a serious embargo. First on your life and then on your ministry. I don't know you, sir. I've not seen anything around you. But I want to pray because I am seeing, number one, God is taking away this embargo upon your life. But number two, I'm seeing that God is granting you the spirit of revelation. Amen. The revelatory grace. Amen. Revelatory dimension of the anointing. And then I'm also seeing God raising financial support. Help us. Amen. Very strong pillars for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you, sir? Is it alright if I pray for you? I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. No, no, no. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this servant of God. Sir, in the name that is above all names, I speak to you because you believe. May the Lord shift you to a new dimension of ministry. Let the grace for revelation rest mighty upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare to you, God will raise strange financial helpers to attend to your needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is... I'm hearing... Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. We have to hurry up, but I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. Of course, I can imagine that there will be so many people with that name, but we have to hurry up because I want to pray. Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. And the Lord wants to minister to that person now, please. Every foul spirit. There is a family here. You are from Zonkua. Zonkua should be Southern Kaduna. Is that? Zonkua. Where are you? Please verify. Let's, let's make sure that. You are a family. Oh, it's not just one person. I'm not just saying one person who came. There are many people who came who are from Zonkua. We are in Kaduna State. I'm saying a family. This is what God is revealing to me. Let me pray for you. You came out for Ezekiel. I want to pray for you. What do you do, my friend? 
You are, you are brothers. Ezekiel, I will pray for you. I, of course, I will pray generally, but it, it may not necessarily be for everybody. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please, hold on. I hope, I hope there's, there's why they are coming out. Why, why are all of you out for Ezekiel? Okay, I'll pray for you. The Lord is asking me to do something, except that the Lord said so. I wouldn't have done it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm seeing at least eleven people when I pray for them. Please don't be embarrassed. The addiction of smoking um, either drugs or this. Um, uh, all these things that they smoke. There, I'm seeing at least 11 people and the Lord is saying he wants to deliver them now. Now, in this place. I'm going to pray for these gentlemen, but I'm going to ask those people. Listen, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I, like I said, I would not call you to embarrass you, but God is showing me, both men and women, not only women, addicted to smoking this codeine or, or cocaine or whatever it is. Drugs. The Lord wants me to pray for those people. So I'll, immediately I pray for this, I will call you. Please leave your friend, leave whatever you are doing and you'll come and stand and I'll pray for you. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that God is lifting you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is lifting you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that everything that does not represent the counsel of God, let it live your life right now. And for all of you who stood in for the name Ezekiel, I pray for you. My friend, look at me. God is visiting your family, eh? You. is visiting your family in a very strange way. This, it will not reach weekend, next week, before you start getting testimonies. Amen. This thing I'm telling you is less than one week. Write it down. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. May the Lord honor this word. And for all of you who are standing in for Ezekiel, in the name of Jesus, everything around your life that is not the planting of the Lord, be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. God bless you. What's, what's, well, from Zonkwasa? Are you a family? Yes, God, no family. This is our father, but we cannot speak English. No problem. He is welcome. Please come. Let him come. No, don't, don't let the children who cry. Their children. Is it the same family? Uh, don't worry, I'll pray for you. And this one too? And your children? Madam, what do you do, ma? You are a nurse. I will pray for you, Ko. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, turn this woman's life around. Amen. And turn the life of her children around. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, who is, what? He speaks your language? You, okay, when I talk to you, don't worry, you don't have to give up. When I talk to you, you will, you will interpret to him. Eh? Tell him that I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. And that this thing has been responsible for the retrogression of everybody within this family. That people rise in this family just when they should sit down, they either die or go down. From school before he died. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I'm seeing that this is yes. what happens. Yes. Just when people should settle down. My brother, yes. Our first call, he graduated from school before he died. Is your father? Yes. Is he your brother? Yes, my brother. Okay. Oh, please, someone help us and attend to these children, please. These are your don't worry, my dear. There's no need to shout. Please tell him that there is a name that is above every other name. And that I'm going to pray right now. And no matter how long it has stayed, this entire family must be set free. Can I pray? What do you do? This Today. Where? Abu. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. You are going to be an evangelist. I don't know yes. him. I don't know anything. I'm just 
I'm just telling you that this man, I'm seeing by the Spirit, this, this boy you are seeing is going to be a mighty man of God, an evangelist. Hold my hands. I release you into this grace. May this anointing take you to dimensions untold. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh grace for prayer, fresh grace for the word. I shift you by the Spirit into these dimensions. Now, I pray for this family and every other family that has this kind of thing, that there are forces that sit on people's destinies. Just when people should sit down, they crash down. In the name that is above all names, I declare, be free now. Be free now. Help this girl. Be free now. Every spirit. Look at the children. I cast this spirit now. Now. Out of this family. In the mighty name of Jesus. I release this family from the spirit of death and the influences of the grave. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. And let me prophesy to any other family here that is under this kind of yoke. In the name of Jesus, come out of it now. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Please, they can go back to their seats. Now, I want to pray. Our time is gone. We must hurry up tonight. But, the Lord is showing me people who want to be delivered from this addiction to drugs and smoking. Listen, no, everybody here is a product of God's mercy. There's no such thing as anybody. There are not many times I do this, but I have to obey what God is. Are you here for that case? Huh? Okay. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. So please, I'm going to give one minute. Whether you are in overflow 3, overflow 2B, 2C, 4, wherever, or in here, you know that some people are not bad. They are not bad people. They just need to be free. Please run and come and stand here right now. You are addicted to all of these drugs. Don't be looking at anybody to say, so this one is none of your business. Please celebrate everyone. It takes a lot of courage for them to come. Are you clapping for them? Everyone, please. There are still more people because I saw a number of people in my vision as God was speaking to me. You love the Lord, but this addiction. See, these addictions are spirits. It's not about somebody being good or bad. Look at them coming. It's not. Look, let me tell you the truth. Addiction is something that is, there is a spirit behind it. Please keep coming. Be bold and come and stand. God will set you free from it. Son of Righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Please hurry up. I'm about to pray for them now. So. If you belong to that category, if your friend is stopping you, leave that friend and come and stand. Nobody is condemning you. It's an addiction. It's a spirit. When you see the kinds of people coming, some of them are better than you in terms of character. It's a spirit. We have to deal with this thing because it's killing people everywhere. Some of you just have dreams. And right from the realm of dreams, you cannot resist it again. I want to pray a serious prayer for you. Jesus is here. Some of you were doing well. You were excelling. Even in life academically. Until that spirit just came. And it just brought you down. I want to pray for you. Some of you were introduced to it by friends. Friends. They brought you together. Gave you those things. Look at people coming. Let's celebrate them. Young and old. This is not an issue for young people. Young and old. All together. God is setting people free. 
Listen, let me tell you sincerely, I love every one of you and I know that many people would not have one tenth the courage to come and stand. This is a family. Nobody dares condemn you. We are products of His grace. The Lord wants to set you free once and for all. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me tell you this. Remember the teaching that I gave you. I told you that every storm is calmed by rebuking the wind and rebuking the water. It is not what you hold and smoke or what you swallow that is the issue. There is a spirit. No amount of guidance and counseling will solve the problem. You will need to be delivered. And I want to pray for you. Praise the Lord. There are two things I want you to do for me. One, when I pray for you, you have a responsibility to let some of the association, because I know how addictive these associations are, tell them that Apostle Joshua Selman prayed for you and trust God for grace to leave them alone. Come to the house of God and make good friends. Are we together? You are not free when your association is not free. Because some of you, you probably have made attempts before. But you will go back and you will meet those people and they will laugh at you and say, forget about that nonsense. So you have to trust God for grace. But let me pray for you. Please lift your hand if you can. Some of you are here. Some of you are standing for your children. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. I know that not all of you are standing for yourself. Father, you gave this as a revelation. There are many people under the addiction of strange spirits. And Lord, I stand right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that in the frontier from my left to my right, let the angel of deliverance move right now across this place. And cut the help them, please, my God. And cut this change. I'm praying for all of you in front now. The legal basis upon which this spirit operates by the blood of the eternal covenant. I break that legal hold now. I break that legal hold now. The spirit of addiction to drugs. Be free from it now. Be free from it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I pray for every one of you. Hear me. I'm saying it again. I don't care how it came into your life. It leaves you now and forever. It leaves you now and forever. Any association that the devil uses to keep you here. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. I set you free from them forever. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you are free. Say after me, all of you in front. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again. In the name of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am free from any and all forms of addiction. I declare that from tonight addiction to drugs addiction to anything that is not of the Christ it leaves my life now and every spirit behind it I command you to let me go now I declare my liberty I declare that I am free in Jesus name let it be so for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking to you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No one condemns you. We stand as a family. We stand by you. And we agree as a family of faith. You are free from this nonsense this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Now, don't be embarrassed. I'm going to pray from here. But I'm seeing a spirit on a lady. It is only married men that look for you. Shalis kabarutas kabariata. Only married men. A young gentleman who can settle down with you will never be interested in you. 
but a man who is already married. That's the one who will look for you. In the name of Jesus, whether in this auditorium, overflow, one, two, three, whoever is standing under the influence of that spirit, I'm declaring right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. Shout aloud, Amen. Be free now. Please help that girl. Be free now. I'm still praying. I'm, I'm still sensing this anointing is still is like he's moving and searching for people. I say it again. That anointing, that grace, whatever it is, that makes only married men to look for you. In the name that is above all names, Sabakatakata, Zeketekataprakatosh. Be free now. Be free now. The Lord is showing me a door in the spirit. And I'm seeing that door closed. Before we pray for the sick, the Lord is saying to open that door. I believe that there are many people, it represents the next level of several people's lives. I stand right now, my God, I'm seeing rain just coming on people. My God, the King of glory, I declare, everybody who is standing in front of a closed door, I speak to that door, be open now. Be open now. Bring this woman for me. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Who came with this madam? She came on her own. Because the kind of breakthrough I see God bringing for this woman will surprise you. Madam, I don't know you, but in a name that is above all names, you came with her? From where? Here. In the name of Jesus, madam, I don't know you, but I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every closed door before you I command that door to be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus. As I pray for her, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit that is not of God to leave this lady. Look at her tearing her clothes. You see how these wicked spirits walk. Listen, let me tell you something. Deliverance Look at me. Deliverance is not just the issue of shouting and demons rolling up, up and down. No. Now, you can see this girl. Imagine that she's your fiancé and your wedding is next week. You see what we are saying? I, I'm not saying she's a bad person. Please, don't... Mm -mm. But you, the spirit will not shout when they are joining you. It's when you have gotten married, you see these wicked manifestations. Now the Lord is that spirit. And the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is. Are you looking for a job? Who is looking for it? I'm saying, hold on please. Listen, um, my sister, please shift for me. This fair lady. Where are you coming from? Kaduna? Come and stand here. I'm seeing someone shaking your hands that you got a job. Are you looking for a job? Let us stand up. Are you looking for a job? Yes, sir. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling you. I'm seeing God giving you a job that will surprise you. There's, there's no need to cry. God is here to roll away reproach and to take away shame. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, according to this that the Lord has revealed, He will come and stand here and He will testify of your job. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God come upon you and set you free right now. Now, very quickly, we are going to do two things. Please, if how many of you have written your prayer requests? If you have written your prayer request, please bring it out. If you have not written it, take time to write very quickly now. Um,
What is I'm hearing Baba Silas. What is Baba Silas? Baba Silas. I don't know if that is a name or that's the name of somebody's father. Baba Silas is what I'm hearing. If there is such a person, let me just talk to the person. Now, quickly, please submit your prayer requests. Um, there will be ushers, PR, help them, or whatever department. Huh? What? Give him the mic. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Your brother is Silas. What I'm hearing is Baba Silas. I will pray for you. Why are they coming out, please? Huh? Your father is Silas. We we'll pray for you. Let me just touch you and then you go back. Let it be over in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you are standing in for, let it be over in Jesus' name. Forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, over forever. In the name of Jesus Whatever the challenge is, over forever, in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free from sickness. They will not say you have fibroid. I cursed that devil, that lady you are carrying. I rebuke that spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, please, all those, listen, please. We are going to pray for the sick now. Um, there are so many people tonight, and we have to be fast. Our time is gone. But let me say this, whether you are in overflow one or two or three, if you are coming here particularly trusting God for fruit of the womb, whatever overflow, no matter how far, I want you to come into this main auditorium because I will pray for you. Um, alongside them, all those who are trusting God for healing, please come and stand now. Overflow one, please move to your projector stand. Um, protocol will have to help me. How many overflows do we have tonight? Yes. You you Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. Stretch your hands to this place. Cry from the depth of your heart. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. Cry from the depth of your heart. Father, this Egyptian that I see today. I see them no more forever. Is someone stretching your hands? Pray, pray. Don't look around. Pray. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, turn situations around. In the name of Jesus, wipe tears. In the name of Jesus, let impossible situations turn around. Shiparutas Kabarada Gadesh. Declare it. Those online follow us as we pray. We prophesy upon this request. We pray over your request. In the name that is above all names. The God of miracles. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba Father, we cry, Abba Father, hallowed be The miracle service is a very powerful part. People have recorded unspeakable testimonies turn around by the hand of God. Father, I bow my knees in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the grace that you have supplied. I bring before you, O oh God, the pain, the tears, the requests of your people. They have brought this as a token of their faith, as proof that they believe you. Lord, you do these things because you love us, but you also do it to honor our faith. 
Therefore, Lord, I stand in agreement with the Spirit and I declare that every situation represented here turns into a testimony now. Every situation represented here by the God of heaven turns into a testimony now. Whoever must lose sleep for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must hear instructions from God for this request to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must be lifted for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Father, I cry in your name. Let this not just be a ceremony tonight. Your people have waited. Your people have prayed. Honor the faith of everyone here with strange results in the name of Jesus. There are situations here that need creation. It does not yet exist in the earth realm. We call it from the realm of the spirit to appear in the physical realm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are situations here that only you can solve. Some of them are death sentences. Some of them are issues that relate to life and destiny. We cry to you, O God of heaven, arise tonight and do strange miracles. That by this time, next miracle service, some people will only write to intercede for others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep standing, everybody. Keep standing. I want to pray for you now. Thank you for your patience, but I want to speak over your life and I want you to believe every word. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I prophesy to you, number one, doors be open now. Doors be open now. Gates be open now. Gates be open now. Everyone here in ministry, I stretch my hands towards you. The fire, the grace, shalakatosia. The unction for a new level. The operation of the gifts of the spirit. The operation of revelatory dimensions. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Let me pray over your finances. This is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare by the power of prophecy. Supernatural supplies for you. Supernatural supplies by the wisdom of God. Every pit you have found yourself in. In the name of Jesus, come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. I pray for every family here that has not yet seen the goodness of God in experience this year. I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will return here with strange testimonies. Everything that is yours, but is not yet in your hands. I stand by the God of heaven and by prophecy, wherever it is, I command you to locate your hand and your destiny. I command you to locate your hand and your destiny. I pray for those trusting God for jobs. Father, you are the one who gives jobs. I declare that between now and the next one month, O oh God of heaven, 
Let us have strange testimonies of miracle jobs. Strange testimonies of miracle jobs. I'm praying for everybody, but this prayer particularly is for the men. The grace that establishes a man that can grant you stability, whether financially, structurally, may that grace, please believe it, may that grace land on your life now. Structural establishment in the name of Jesus Christ. Every dying business in the mighty name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I speak by the Spirit. Let it jack back to life now. I pray for your prayer life. The fire you have not seen from January, even up until September. The grace to fast, the grace to travel wherever you are. Let it rest upon your life now. I pray for you. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The grace that can open a man's eyes to scripture. That you will see. May that grace rest upon you now. Every opportunity that once came to you but was not well utilized and has left you in the name of Jesus and by the mercy of God I stand tonight and I call for a repeat of it a repeat of that opportunity a repeat of that opportunity may God restore time may God restore opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ Every one of your family members that has been grounded for whatever reason, in the name of Jesus, as you are standing here, may the angel of the Lord, wherever they are across this nation or around the nations of the world, may the angel of the Lord ensure that in this season they are lifted. I declare that they are lifted. Anyone called barren, whether biological barrenness, financial barrenness, ministerial barrenness, I speak to you. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. I say it again. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Every helper of destiny that must show up in this season for you to rise wherever they are i cry unto my god who is your god in the name of jesus may they appear before your destiny hallelujah some of you have been at the same level you have not gone down but you have not gone up either. In the name of Jesus, this night, I push you by prophecy. Step into the next level. Help them, please. Step into the next level of your life. This is the month of September. When a woman is pregnant, after nine months, she's supposed to give birth. And if she does not give birth, the doctors have a way of inducing the birth. In the name of Jesus, everything in the loins of prophecy are located for you to be born in this season. I speak to you as a spiritual midwife, deliver in the name of Jesus. Everybody who spoke evil to the ears of your destiny helper. That people who should lift you, but because they had an information about you, in the name of Jesus, by the blood, I declare a reconnection. I declare a reconnection. I 
time is gone, but please believe this. These are not empty words. They are not empty words at all. Let me pray for your finances again. This is what is squeezing people down. Squeezing families down. People are giving up on God because of tea and bread. Because of the necessities of life. Listen, Koinonia, I put a mark of exemption in this season over you. Hear me? I command poverty to leave you like the day leaves the night. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the beginning of the ember month where the spirit of death moves upon families. People who have labored when it's now time to reap, they will say obituary, survive by. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. Listen, and for those of you appointed unto death, whether for you or your loved ones, by the name of Jesus Christ, we extend your life in this place. I pray for every student here. I don't know what may be happening around your academics, but if it requires change, we change it now. If it requires upgrade, we upgrade it now. If it requires justice, we administer justice now. If it requires mercy, we provoke mercy now. And everyone who is in final years here, we graduate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayers and we are done. Everything that represents delay, stagnation, or limited progress, the chain that will allow you to move but not so far, I break that chain now in the name of Jesus. I release you make progress. I release you make progress. I release you make progress. prayer point. Listen to me. Honor is better than money. You can have money and not have honor. Honor is better than education. You can be educated and not have honor. The Bible says, and Jabez not was more anointed, was more honorable than his brethren. The grace that makes for honor, that can pick you out of a crowd, and separate you in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon you now the Lord is adding one prayer point to my, my, my spirit and we have to pray it and the sons of Issachar that they were men who had understanding of the times Listen, I want to release grace for discernment. It's important to know you can miss seasons just because you are not alive. You can, they will come back, but it will take a long time. But I pray for you, the grace for discernment, to know seasons. Receive that grace now. Maybe... I should add one more prayer point. Some of you are praying, Lord, where do I go from here? Should I travel out of the country? Should I relocate to Abuja? Should I go to Lagos? See, destiny decisions are never to be taken carelessly. Please hold on, hold on. Relax with this thing. We are praying. Listen, there are destiny decisions in life that you need the help of God. Who to marry? Where to live? How many children to give birth to? It looks natural, but it's spiritual. You can give birth to what will fight your blessing. Who to associate with? 
And Lot went with him. And Jonah went with them. Their experiences were not the same. I pray for you that in the matters of destiny, may the veil, the haziness, let it be torn into pieces tonight. I know a gentleman who had an evangelistic call. Sincere person with an evangelistic call. He went to open a church and he began to struggle to pieces as if God did not send him. No offering, no support, no open door. He was struggling because the pastoral grace was not there. Well intentioned, but no discernment. Again, I pray for you. Whatever you are doing now that is not in the blueprint of your destiny, whether ministerially speaking, business-wise, maritally speaking, I declare a correction now. I declare a correction now. Elijah was asked to wait at Bucheri for a season, not forever. And a raven brought bread, food for him, and he drank from the brook. But a time came when the brook dried. God needed to change strategy. If Elijah did not know he would die there, the same God can help you for 10 years. But by the 11th year, you will change strategy. And if you cannot discern what blessed you before can kill you, I pray for you. The grace to know when to switch. The grace to know when God is saying something else. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be glorified forever and ever. Jesus remains Lord. Amen. Where is that, my friend, who has been waiting for the altar call? He will be the first to come and stand here. While he stands, I want everybody here, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, overflow four, and all the other overflows. You are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus, I need him fast, and I need him seriously. Whether to surrender your heart for the first time, or you are saying, I want to rededicate my life. He cannot be the only one here. Wherever you are, quickly come and join him. Quickly come and join him. I will only count one to five. If you are coming from outside, please rush. Come and join them. You are saying, Apostle, let this be the night that I encounter Jesus. Is there someone like that? One. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Two. Please, if you are coming from outside, rush. Run to Jesus. Three. Please clear the way for them. If it's for the altar call, let them come. Apostle, I want to come, but my friend is stopping me. May that friend leave you alone in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to come, but people know me. He says that he who denies me for men, I will deny before my father. You have to rush to come. Beloved, I don't want you to give up. Stay tuned and get connected. Keep listening. Keep being blessed. By the mouth of the Lord, through his servant, Apostle Joshua Selma, on this platform, Reflector Hub TV. Don't forget the scripture speaking, and the Bible says, God makes all things beautiful in his time. This season, you must know it is your time. Is your time to shine? Is your time to reign? Is your time to experience the freshness and the newness of the wine Jesus serves? Is your time to encounter the Lord afresh? Is your time for salvation? It's your time for deliverance. The Lord makes all things, not some things, beautiful in this time. It is truly your time to experience and to come in contact with that healing power of the Lord that you have so desired. Beautiful in this time, it's your time to embrace a new walk with the Lord. It's your time to refreshing 
that relationship that has been looking like one-sided has been struggling it's your time to come alive in that business that all hope seems to have been lost don't forget the scripture said though a tree being cut down at the scent of water it will spring back to life it's your time because when the lord breaths reaches everything you cast your hand upon to do it will truly come alive it will spring back no matter how long that situation must have been decaying no matter how long that situation or that obstacle might have been there no matter how long that condition or that circumstances has faced you or has posed through a challenge to your life it's with great assurance that we bring to you the inevitable counsel of the lord the wonder working counsel of the lord that this is the time that god makes all things beautiful in your life no matter what you're passing through don't give up yet i hope you know the scripture in the book of job the bible said the question was asked to Job, i doubt the first man or was that found before the hills you are not the first but i can assure you that this will be an end to that challenge this will be an end to that situation this will be an end to that long years of weeping of sorrow this will be an end to that long terminal disease that has so afflicted your life the infirmities the infirmities that darkness has thrown upon your health and is choking your body is making you uncomfortable bringing so much inconvenience to your life this is the sad time because the hand of the lord coming upon it will make all things new and i tell you the previous story men have written about your life will definitely be raised because god is set to do new things but adventure you are a new viewer I would like you to subscribe to Reflect to Hope TV YouTube channel. Ensure to stay tuned. Share this video to your friends, family, neighbors, loved ones, so as to also get them blessed and release this message of hope to them. Don't forget to hit the notification bell by the side of the subscribe button. And see you always in our next video. We love you so much and God bless you.